BackgammonGalaxy.com presents Beginner's Mistakes in Backgammon, an exclusive tutorial. Lesson number one, don't bury your checkers. To bury a checker is to play a checker down to the deeper points in your home board, so it can't be used for making new points or hitting your opponent's checkers for the rest of the game. In this position, a beginner might be tempted to bury a checker. Moving a checker from the six point to the two or one point is a big blunder. This checker will be buried for the rest of the game. You should aim to conquer the open points in front of your opponent's rearmost checkers. That's why the correct move is 13 to 8. It keeps all your checkers alive and provides a useful builder on the 8 point to help you close the 7, 5, or 4 point on your next roll. If you bury checkers, you'll have fewer checkers to move the rest of the game, which decreases your flexibility, safety, and ability to build a prime. You only have 15 checkers in total, so use every single one of them as efficiently as possible. In backgammon, there's a term called crunching. This is when your checkers are forced to be buried while the priming battle is still on, and it's the worst possible positional disadvantage. When you're priming your opponent, you want him to crunch his front position while keeping him trapped. This will effectively win you the game almost every time. Avoid crunching at all costs, especially early in the game. In the end game, we might be forced to crunch if the alternatives are too risky. BackgammonGalaxy.com Play Among the Stars Available on browser, tablet, and smartphone Subscribe to see more Backgammon videos Tell us which Backgammon videos you want to see BackgammonGalaxy.com presents Beginner's Mistakes in Backgammon An exclusive tutorial Lesson number two, don't run if you're behind in the race. To figure out who is leading the race, you must look at the pip count. The player with the lowest pip count is ahead in the race. In fact, the race dictates the most fundamental rule of thumb in backgammon strategy. If you're ahead in the race, you want to avoid getting hit and bring your checkers home. If you're behind in the race, you want to try and hit a checker since the pure race will leave you in a losing position. When you're behind in the race, you have to try and hit your opponent to improve your winning chances. Running away will decrease contact with your opponent's checkers, thereby making it very difficult for you to hit him, so stay behind and wait. Let's take a look at how to play this 6-5. Your opponent has escaped his backmost checkers, while you're still trapped with the one checker on the 24 point. If you run with this checker by playing 24 to 13, you'll be in a straight race with 15 pips down. That's a losing proposition. The right idea is to stay back with this checker and wait for an opportunity to hit. Meanwhile, you should focus on building your prime, so you'll have a strong front position to win the game in case you get lucky and hit your opponent. Here's another example. After moving, you'll be leading the race by 15 pips. That's why you should use this great roll to escape your backmost checker. Since you're ahead in the race, you want to avoid getting trapped behind your opponent's prime. Playing 24 to 13 makes for a racing game, which is exactly what you want when you're leading 15 pips. What's up, Backgammon fans? I'm Mark Olson from BackgammonGalaxy.com. I'm here with Super Grandmaster Mochi, and we're about to see the UBC 2020 Contender Tournament semi-final begins uh, with Hideaki Ueda from Japan playing against Hans Liebe from Norway. So this is going to be a Great, great fight. Uh, what do you think, Mochi, about this matchup? Yeah, it's a very exciting match. I mean, uh, my Japanese fellow Veda is already uh, semi-final. The other semi-final, there is uh, Michi. So Japanese should be very, very happy about this. <laughs> they uh, Hans, definitely yeah, should. Hans Ribi also uh, from Norway is a very, very strong player. I'm playing maybe like 30 years by now. Yes, yes, a lot of experience uh, in this tournament. Uh, Ueda is actually the, the one to qualify th w through his average PR yeah. in both day one and day two. Mm -hmm. So he's been playing extraordinarily well, mm -hmm. around a 2.7. And consistent. Very consistent. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. the lowest variance PR player. He's oh, okay. basically playing between a 2 and a 2.8 in mm -hmm. every single match. And uh, Hans has been playing a 4.0, mm -hmm. which is actually weak in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, from a general perspective, it's not weak, it's very strong, but in this tournament, 4.0 is, is kind of weak. But somehow he found a way to get all the way to the semi-final. Well, I mean, he outplayed uh, his opponent by PR many times, right? 
although he played four point zero, you know, the outplaying opponent is more important than having a, a good average PR. <laughs> it definitely is. So maybe he has some tricks up his sleeve that mm, might maybe. be. Yeah. Um, I think the players are about to be ready now. Uh, it should get going. So now we're ready, waiting for the tournament director to to start the match. They have been given the green light signal, and I think they are about to. Okay, Hideaki is putting his phone away. Is that a book? Or as uh, a notebook? Yeah, it's okay, a notebook. Okay. It's, a, it's a score note. Okay. So Hideaki has been one of the biggest rising stars of the backgammon world the last couple of years. Um, can, do you know him quite well, don't you, Mochi? Y yes, um, he probably started like three years ago. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> three years ago, and he's already in the UBC semifinal playing like crazy. top five in the world, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay, so we are off. The format is two seven-point matches with the Galaxy format. One point for a PR win, one point for a match win. If the score is 2-2 after the two matches, the best average PR of these two matches will qualify for the final. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the average PR still counts a lot. And every decision matters. 4-3. But on the other hand, it's only a seven-point match. So Hans can easily beat him by PR. For sure, Hideaki is a favorite, but this is an open mm -hmm. semi-final. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the opening play there from, uh, from Hans with the 4-3, Mochi? Oh, it uh, seems reasonable. OK, 6-4. Yeah, I like that play. Mm -hmm. Coming out in front of the stripped midpoint. Now we're going to see a hit. And what about the four mochi? Is this a split or are you going for the prime? Mm, uh, yeah, I like this. You don't need to give a shot. Four two, probably going to see an unstacking move from the midpoint. The question is, how do you split here? Do you do the major split to the 21 point or do you stay back on the 23 point? I believe he should stay, I mean, he should come in on 21. I'll put some pressure on the check on the 10 point. And come down with deuce. Yes, unstacking the midpoint is a must. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to stay in the lower point. Uh, look, this this six one is really ugly low because of his play. Yeah, so the unstacking was a very good, good play. Now he has to decide whether to come out or play the 6 from 10 to 4. So what do you think he's thinking uh, here? I think Mochi? I will hit uh, with the 6 and uh, play 9 to 8. Okay. Hans plays the, the same play as you, Mochi, and it, indeed it's confirmed by XG Plus that this was the best move. That's a pretty good roll from uh, Hideaki. Right. 4-1. <clears throat> Okay. And the viewers have the pip count available, but the players don't. They have to do the pip counting themselves. And that is a skill. But I assume that uh, both players won't have any problems with that. No, no, yeah. At least Hideaki. I'm sure he's very thorough. Well, wow, Hans just wrote a joker. Wow. Six. Two, two on the bar. Two on the bar, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was really a strong return. And we see the PR uh, race. Mm -hmm. Hideaki just made a small error with 6-2. Uh, Hans is still playing at a zero, but Hideaki is now at a 2.5. Okay, it's quite interesting. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, just minor inaccuracy. He could have made the split, which was a big play. That's true, okay. 6-4, so I, he must come out to preserve mobility. You don't want to get stuck with four back checkers. The question is, how do you do it? Do you come out with the 20-point checker or the 21-point checker? I actually come out uh, from 20, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, it, it's actually a mistake, as we can see in the XG oh, feed. Okay. Coming out from the 21 mm -hmm. is the better play. Uh, but Hideaki is looking at coming out from the 20 right now. Mm -hmm. 
what's going on, uh, what's going through uh, Hideaki's mind right now? Um, he's probably going through the numbers of, of his opponent. He will come out for sure one of them. So he decided to four actually, then thinking about the six. Yeah, it makes sense. Coming down to the nine point is an active build up to the open three point and to the seven point. Mm -hmm. And the same amount of the shots anyway. Okay, so he chooses the 20 point checker, which is half a blunder. Wow, that, that big. Yeah, I think it was a 50 or something like this. Interesting. So the PR just spiked up from Hideaki. We still have a long match to go. So maybe, yeah. But Hans is ahead now. Yeah, in the boat. this way Hans has a good number for making a five point and a four point. Yes, that's the only playable five. Playing six to one. This is kind of a prime versus prime position, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Hideaki has the advantage of having a more advanced back anger, and he also has a lot of outfield control and mobility with the checkers in the outfield. So his timing oh, is good. This is a tough play here. Oh, five. Two. Yeah, he could do this. Wow, wow he, he played it, it fast. It. Mm. He played it really fast, and it was right. It was right. Wow. Well played, I Hideaki. I spent one time on it, and uh, I don't know. The anchor breaking plays are always big plays, and he yeah, played it really fast. Yeah, but he has a lot on the ace point, and he, he has four point ball in his own, so uh, risk is very, very limited. Yes. But still. His instincts were very good there, mm -hmm. Hideaki played mm -hmm. it in five seconds. Three, four. I think I can make nine. Oh, do we have a transcription error here? Maybe. I think all the moves are correct by watching the... Look at all those candies here, he brought. Oh! <laughs> ah, yeah. He needs lots of sugar. Yes. And then 4-3. Oh, Hans Liebig just picked up the dice. He shouldn't. It's a 4-3 to move from Hideaki, and he played the 3 in from the bar. And now he's considering the 4. What's your play here? I, play make, I, I make 9 points. Okay. I'm not going to give any more numbers. Getting a hit is too expensive. Yeah, so covering the, the nine point, you mm -hmm. give one number mm -hmm. rather than two numbers. Mm -hmm. Plus, in case he splits, oh. for example, this row, the nine point is blocking. Yeah, and you get the power of the yeah. extra attacker. Mm -hmm. So he must split, obviously, and uh, make the ace point. If he doesn't split here, he's basically running out of timing. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, he will, he will split. Yes. He's the biggest problem. Good play, Hans. Hans. Yeah. yeah. Hans so far plays really good, no? He, uh, he's, I think he's at a zero. Yeah, 0 yeah. 0.3. At a 0 0.6. Wow. 5, 4. Okay, so he cannot hit, unfortunately. So I guess he just has to make a point here. Oh, there's a better play, actually. Yeah, because 10 point doesn't sub anything. It's a 7th point, so... Um, he doesn't need it. It's not even extra builder, so... Yes. This way he leaves 6-5, and double 6 is another shot. Okay, yeah. yeah, it's not a big thing. It's a little bit too front-loaded, this uh, mm -hmm. spare checker. But Hideaki chose to preserve as much outfield control rather than have the best possible attacker and builder on the 6-point. No big deal. Okay, so Hans is considering between the top two moves here. Yeah, he should come out with a four, then... Ah, okay, I have to go to the 15, but the Hansen plays better. Yeah, very good play from Hans, actually. He sacrifices a, a good builder, putting mm -hmm. it on the four point where it's very inefficient. However, or minimizing a shot. Minimizing shots. And he might get some return shots if he gets hit on the seven point. Mm. Okay, so Hideaki, Hideaki stops up and thinks here about the cube. Definitely has some volatility, so I like the fact that he's thinking. As we can see from Extreme Gammon, this is a big no double. Mm -hmm. It's almost a, a, a coin flip position. Oh, oh wow. wow, that's a big one. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big, big blunder. This, that, can, uh, this can cause a much PR. It could. 
it could be one of the biggest blunders Hidiagi has made the entire tournament, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is anti his style. I, I think he is, is very conservative with the cube. That was my thinking. But uh, Okay, and he made a small error here with the blitz, uh, going for the blitz. Oh, oh wow. that's a joker. Mm -hmm. um, I can see why Hideaki wanted to double. The, the position had volatility, he had mm. some blitz value. Mm. However, Hans' prime value was just too strong. Yeah, and sometimes he doesn't even hit. Sometimes he misses everything. Yeah. He was a 54% favorite in the position. He did win more gammons, but it's not enough to cube. Mm. But now it's uh, too good, so... <laughs> now it's way too good. Yeah, he's... Uh, now he's happy. Yeah. And it's very expensive in terms of the average PR as well. Oh, yeah. Two seven-point matches. It's not easy to play back even correctly. That's all I can say. Yeah. Four two. Yeah, he's gonna just gonna continue to strike. Sometimes you consider the switching move mm -hmm. to have more covers playing five to three with right, the deuce. Right, right. Oh, that's a great shot. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. Okay, so this looks like a gammon win for Hideaki. Yeah. But Hans played this game perfectly. That's true. He seems calm. Mm -hmm. he, he was thinking about all the right things. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can... Are we seeing a little bit of nerves from Hideaki or...? Maybe, maybe. But it's too early to say that. Yeah. It might be the game one syndrome. Where he simply has to warm up his neurons. So this morning he participated in the quiz seminar and he just won, won it. Hideaki. Hideaki got a 12 problems right out of 15. Yeah, that's and tied amazing. with Zenek. 12 out of 15 in that quiz mm -hmm. was pretty darn good. I got 10. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. You always feel bad when you see the result. It's like, ah, I kind of <laughs> knew this one. Why did I say double pass? It was too good. Uh oh, oh. <gasps> he just left the shot. That's a big number. Okay. If Hans is. is oh. oh, yeah. That was a huge shot. Yeah, it's a huge swing. It's a huge swing because if Hans had hit this checker, saved the gammon, potentially won the point, he would be ahead yeah, yeah. in both PR yeah. and match. Of course, Hideaki still has time to recover his PR, but uh, he really can't afford to make more of those uh -huh. big blunders, especially when Hans is playing this well. Yeah, it's more of a Hans, Hans play. If Hans play okay and rest of the match, then Hideaki has no chance. Yeah. If you see the total equity, Hans, he already committed 500 error. And Hans made already almost zero, so the difference is like 500. Yes, it's huge. Yeah. Four zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Hideagi is playing at a 7.96 in game one. Of course, we're going to see him grind his PR down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if he ends up above a four. Mm -hmm. But uh, that double blunder, that was a big one. Okay, game two, 4 0 to Hideaki. He's off to a great start. Yeah, gotta make that outfield point. 3 2. That's a funny little opening, opening problem here. Mm -hmm. Do you make the, 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 the minor split or yeah, the major I, I split? I do a minor split. Okay. Because uh, if you do a major split, then your six is blocked. Oh, yeah. And they can be put under attack with mm -hmm. the sixes as well. I'm not sure about this five two here. Okay. Actually, it, it is the right play mm -hmm. to, to hit on the ace rather than hit on the three point. Interesting. I, I would go with eight point. I'm not going to hit. You're not going to hit here. Yeah. Okay, that's a small error. Yeah, that's a great play. Well played, Hideaki. <laughs> really good instincts. He's unstacking the six point. His checker distribution is very good. 
he gets the split with tempo. He only leaves 11 shots rather than hitting on the three point, which almost is like 18 shots. So that was a good play. Uh, oh, he fanned, Hans fanned, fanned yeah, with Hans fan, Yeah, now it's 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. He's probably tempted to make the Tiger play here and hit on the three point, but it's just too weak. You still have two checkers behind the smallish prime and it's not really a strong hit. So it's better to do something, something else, something yeah, I mean, positionally. He, he should step up the one of them at least. He needs to come out. His game plan is not really blitzing him. He wants to make an uh, anchor or he wants to come out. I agree. You, you don't want to play with your last spare checker on the midpoint. You don't want to strip your midpoint too early mm -hmm. in the middle game. Mm -hmm. So what else has he really? So he's got to play the back checkers. Yeah, I like this play. This is my play. What are your considerations, Mochi, when you're considering whether to step all the way up onto the 20 point or just one pip away from the prime? Yeah, point? I don't have a clear explanation to that. Uh, but 21 is already a uh, good point enough. I don't want to go to 20 usually. In general, I don't want to be in 20 because this is the most, this is the point that he wants to make the most. So I'm happy to settle with the four point, not the five point. Yeah. He does make your play mochi. Mm -hmm. I also like it, especially with the structure of the s mm -hmm. uh, strip point on the seven and eight. Okay, that's a pretty good shot. Of course, you got a double hit. Hans knows this. Okay. Yeah. So this is a typical middle game position. It's not it, a cube it, yet. It's not a cube yet because he has an anchor. Even if he rolls perfect, he can still take. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So Hans, of course, he's not going to cube. Oh, this one is interesting. We're going to see a hit here. But there are several ways of playing this one. Oh, I was wrong. Ah, he has that play. Of mm -hmm. course. Sorry, I didn't see it. That's a better play. Well played, Hans. Very strong priming play yeah, here. Yeah, Hans played really well this game. Okay. Hideaki realizes he doesn't have any, any aces to play except mm -hmm. for slotting the five point. Mm -hmm. It is very efficient though. Oh, this is almost a double. Very, very close to a double. The prime is strong from Hans here. 6-5, that's also a good roll. Well, not. I think it's about the race and the score that makes the cube. Okay, what about the 6? I like this play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well played, Hideaki. What about now? Now he's got to stop and think. I would like... Yeah, is this a cube, Mochi? Did he just miss a cube or is it okay? No, I didn't, want, I didn't think it was a cube. Okay. Even good. if it was, it's very small. So. Yeah, because of the 5 point made for Hideaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just making sure that there are no other plays. Wow. So far, a zero error for him. Yes. Now a, it's a cube. That's a big miss from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we're going to see the cube coming. And the question really is, should Hideaki take it? Yeah. It's uh, 25 pips. It's a take for money. Uh, do you have any bad numbers? Double six is reverse shot. Actually, Mochi, I think it's a pass for money. That's a pass for when, money? When you see the percentages over there, okay. you have... Uh, Hans is all the way up to 80% winning chances mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So 25 pips plus a bar point made is a pass. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. The structure is very nice here mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Hans. There's the cube. Oh, oh another wow. double What's going whopper. on here? What is going on? Oh, oh, wait, 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 what are you doing? Is this light play? Six, five? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, he's just okay. clearing. Yeah, 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 sure. Wow, another double blunder from Hideaki. Oh, he rolled five, six, okay, I, I, I saw yeah. something else. And he took it so fast. Of course, he was thinking while Hans was thinking, but I'm surprised. That's amazing. I, mean, that's I could see the pass there because it's amazing. 25 yeah. pips and beautiful structure in front and of zero, the 20. Four, four, zero. Yeah. It's quite amazing. I don't think the score actually matters too much here. Would you adjust in, in a gamblers position here at this score? Yeah, but the 4-0, you must adjust a little bit because you never get to redouble. Yeah. 
but this is uh, this is standard this uh, is hold, this holding game theory, I, I believe. Mean, it, it might not only this much, it might cause uh, entire session because now he plays eight, you know. So if you do the uh, average PR after two matches, he might lose. It's yes. amazing. Yeah. And, and uh, this is a very easy game for Hans. Super easy. Yeah, super Lots easy. of decisions. Yeah. Well, he, he cannot throw out his <laughs> PR anymore, but uh, <laughs> he will maintain his PR here. Yes. And he's going to increase his decision yeah. count. Uh -huh. So when he eventually makes a blunder, oh, right. it, it's not going to... Mm -hmm carry a lot of weight. So this is really, really good for Hans. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed of Hideaki there because for me this was standard holding game theory. 25 pips and a beautiful structure like this in front of the 20 point anger. No bad numbers except for double six. Yeah, something <sighs> is wrong with him now. Yeah. Something wrong. He took it very fast but I think that he was thinking, he was using Hans's time to, to come make his decision. But still, I mean, yeah, I would have spent yeah. a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Especially it, if it you... It was a very, very basic position. I think so. Yeah, he must have studied a lot many, many times. So yeah. I really don't know what's going on in his mind now. Okay, yes. Uh, the game plan for Hans, Hans is just to clear from the rear. Mm -hmm. Don't leave any shots. We have the we have the chat on YouTube. So if the viewers want to ask some questions to me and Mochi, they can they can just write in the chat. We have a lot of under the pressure coming on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it might be under the pressure too. But I, I have to remind you that the Hideaki won many tournaments, uh, nationally and internationally. So he's not a newbie. You know, he knows the pressure. Yeah. Okay, Justin Nowell says that uh, he says when he saw Hideaki play in Chicago, he had a hand fan and mm -hmm. he was going much slower. Okay. So perhaps there's some. I think I, I've noticed this, this as well that Hideaki is shaking his dice quite fast. He's moving the checkers. That's true. So he That's might have true. a little bit of a high, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you call that, tension level. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a good thing, but sometimes maybe he's a little bit over the top right now. Mm -hmm. Whereas Hans is looking really cool and yeah. collected. Yeah. We should have had the pulse, the pulse uh, measurements. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there we have a full. Well, by the way, Hans has only one checkers off now. <laughs> <laughs> so he can win yet. lace uh, yes. by rolling double six twice, maybe. He needs some luck. Yeah, yeah. Here we have the the over, overview of the board and the the transcriber Michael Krakus, and the the beautiful board from Gamana. Very nice ball. It matches the Galaxy color too. So you noticed? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, obviously this is almost a gin position for Hans. He has to get really lucky. But uh, this is such a high profile match. So Hideaki is going to try to see if he can get lucky here with a double six. So Hideaki's PR now is down in the 6.5-ish after this game is mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hans is really playing perfectly so far. And not only that, he seems so calm and collected. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the resign. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Hans's style. I mean, he pose when he need it, then shake, play. It's a very nice tempo. Yeah. So very calm. I don't feel, I don't see any pressure for Hans. In a while, Hideaki might be, maybe high tension, we don't know. But he took the kill very fast. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Sebastian Kujis. Kujic, why not P40 EG Galaxy board? Actually, P40 was the original sponsor for the event, but uh, something went wrong with the shipping of the board, unfortunately. So we never arrived to, to the location here, unfortunately. So we had to use our backup board, which is my personal board, actually. But luckily, I had ordered in, in Backgammon Galaxy Colors, mm -hmm. so the damage was minimal. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are missing the, the P40 
boards with the logos. Yeah. I have a P40 board in my house. I, I briefly thought maybe I should bring it, but then you know I gotta go to Melbourne and the, you know it's too much. You have the prize board for the yeah. 2019 yeah. UBC Championship. That's cool. Okay, so what's going on here? This is like a blitz versus prime position. Hideaki has a blitz formation. He has the deep points made, which are Hansen impure. Six five, duplicating six. Yeah. Six, six three. three. Wow. Interesting. How do you play six three. I think you got a hit with three. That's that's for sure. For sure. Yeah. Then six. There's a. Oh, okay. He played it fast. I guess played. that's my play, but mm -hmm. he did play it quite fast. Five three. What a shake. Okay, Hans has the annoying habit of putting two checkers on top of yeah, each other yeah, on the bar. Yeah. Horrible for streaming purposes. <laughs> One moment, but this could be a cube. I think it is a cube. Ah, and he's down 4-2. Yeah. You're right, Mochi. It's a little bit scary. This is a borderline it's cube. It's a borderline, okay. Because he got the timing advantage here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he has to clean up the two blocks, and most likely he has to leave one block, so that's why this is a borderline no double. Okay, so now it's a borderline on XG++, mm -hmm. but I, again, I like the fact that Hans is thinking about all the right things here. Yeah. He does have that stack on the midpoint, it's a little bit inflexible, and he has two blocks that he has to clear. The, there's not a direct connection between the two blocks that would have been easier for Hans to cube right, if right, he, he right, could right. consolidate with a, with a single mm -hmm. die. But for example, Hans can roll like 6-3 uh, you know, or 6-1-5 to 4-3 can connect it. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he, yeah. he has a very strong position. So according to Extreme Gammon, this is a borderline no double. Mm -hmm. From a strategic point of view, if, if Hans knew this, he should probably just double since he's ahead in the PR race and but then he he's not, not gonna. Know he's ahead in he the PR. has no idea. <laughs> That's the thing. They will know after the first match what the PR result is, mm -hmm. at least from the quick analysis before it goes to the, the, the deep analysis. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so Alex Wilson says Hi, Mark and Mochi. Glad to see you both here. Hope that Ramesh is now watching this match too. I like it so he much. He did double. He did double. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind that decision. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually very mature that he finds a cube here. Mm -hmm. Very few players would double, I think. And if he clean up the blocks, leaving yeah. a 7, 10, 7, 9, 10. Not a bad number. Could have been double better. Double is good. Ooh. Okay. So how is he going to play this one? I think you're going to step up to the bar, that's for sure. Um, then probably just make a heavy bar. Yes, coming up because the race is not that, not that far behind. Mm -hmm. He's just down. He's down 11 pips after this move. Yeah. So that is a very strong argument for coming out mm -hmm. to the 18 point. The less of a, of a race uh, deficit you have, the more you want the advanced anchors because you want to maximize your racing uh, equity as well as your contact equity. He might, yeah, that's the right idea, Hideaki, that is good. Or he wants, he, he, he might stay back, which is another but error. I think this is a very difficult play, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you, you, you recover, you save some gammon by play, making this play, coming out. There is a lot of blitz potential here, actually, even though it's a prime formation for Hans. He does have that front-loaded blitzy, uh, position, so this good play from Hideaki, mm -hmm. very good play. He minimizes the blitz value mm -hmm. from Hans by making this play. And uh, he doesn't want to get on the bar because he actually has a lot of race value here. And now he has the same dilemma. Yeah, yeah. Does he come out, which definitely loses less split, uh, gammons? Or I does think he, he has to stay back. Uh, there are some bad numbers like 6-5, 6-1 uh, is a bad number too. Right, six one is definitely yeah. Um, yeah. What else? Like, uh, not many. Really. How about three one? 
Oh, so you want to, he can play safe, but it's really ugly. Oh, so you want, he can go to ace. Oh, yeah, three yeah. one go to the ace. Yeah, five one is ugly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's difficult to charge. I think I was leaning towards this play, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so oh, yeah. XG, we didn't see the, the, the analysis for the move, but it doesn't give an error, so it's probably the right idea. Coming out on the other side of the avalanche, you don't want to be there and have the, all those checkers falling down in your head. Ooh, and now the race is equalized. He is up one pip, actually. He is up one pip. He should go. With one pip up, he has no timing to hold the, uh, hold the bar point. He should translate into the uh, race game. That's my opinion. What, what do you think the, the... Oh, no, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right, Mochi. Mm -hmm. What do you think the borderline in the race here would be for you to stay back on the 18, 18 point? Oh, that... I don't have a specific number, but uh, the, his up one pip is uh, no way to keep the bar point. Yeah, so maybe I think like six, yeah, I seven, mean, six, seven pips down no, in that range. maybe he's up like, uh, down like two, three pips, then he should consider by stand back. Okay, so even less, okay. Mm -hmm. This is great for Hans, getting into a long race. He's gonna have 15, 20 easy decisions here. Yeah. Uh, also, he already made a deuce point and ace point, that means his position is overloaded, uh, front loaded, so he has no timing uh, to keep the bar point. That's a very good point. Yeah, so when you make the deeper point, your mm -hmm. contact value goes down yeah. because you don't have the timing. Mm -hmm. And if you were to make a hit, you're not going to have a prime. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. Okay. So not much strategy here, this is just a long race. Whoever gets the better dice. Well, um, Hideaki might think, uh, should think about the cube at some point. He's leading the race. Not oh, now, gonna of be course, up. but... Uh, yeah, he's gonna be up 11. 11, yes. So let's see what Hans rolls. You wanna get mm -hmm. something big? Okay, 4-3, it's gonna keep the cube away. Mm -hmm. It's not a good number, it's an average number, a little bit below average. This is a great game for Hideaki because he's not gonna lose a gamble at all. That's true, but he's giving a lot of easy decisions to Hans. Yeah, in terms of PR, of course, yeah. but they don't know about it. Yeah. Um, okay, that was... Uh, he's still keeping up, keeping the cube away. Oh, I can see that we... No, you got to make the full point, then probably... I would go to 8-5. Okay, with the with the three. Mm -hmm. um, I can see that the settings from for XG, we forgot to take away the, the mm -hmm. effective pip count, so now it, the pip count is scrambled. Watching yeah. the, the EPC rather than the We can count the pip, pip count. We could. <laughs> you said it's a part of the skill. <laughs> 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 this one is easy, actually. <laughs> it's a very symmetric and uh, you sh shouldn't take many seconds to do a cluster this count 60, here. 60 I think. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very easy to count. So he's up four <laughs> tips, and uh, now he's up four tips. You gotta play six to three. Yeah. Martin Folle says lazy commentators. <laughs> I think. Yeah, <laughs> Mochi isn't lazy. <laughs> so uh, Hans is okay, so what five tips? Okay, Hans is leading five pips, so definitely no cube, and he has more checkers off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's two pips, and same amount of checkers off. Oh, that's a huge, big, huge shot. Mm -hmm. Six five. That's another huge shot. Mm -hmm. Yaki is keeping up. Well, actually, Hideaki is leading one pip. So now it's nine. Yeah. We're not going to see a recube here unless mm, something, or something weird happens. Accident happens. Yeah, it's going to be. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. He could recube, and the take point would be 16%, right? Mm -hmm. For Hans Liebe. So or in the last shake, where exactly. he would not get recube. If we get into a position where Hideaki is between, uh, is more than a 82, 83% favorite, we might get a recube. But let's see, he's still an underdog here. The best play from Hans with the ace is to play five to four. 
but I guess he's counting out the numbers here. This is just a technicality. Okay, so he's going back and forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. He does find the best play. It's actually important because in this format, you don't want to have too many of those small errors, especially not in a racing position. Wow, mm -hmm. that is huge. Now Hideaki needs to get lucky. Okay, there is a, there is a, there chance. Is a chance. We needed a 2-1. Okay. 4-4. No, four, yeah, four. Four, four. Three point match. Hans plays late 0.3. And this Hideaki comes down to 4.7. Yeah, so Hideaki is grinding down his PR, but he does have two big blunders. Yeah. Uh, but for the, for the most part, Hideaki has been playing well, except for those huge blunders and uh, I mean Hans is just killing it right now playing amazingly 6-5 uh-huh let's see game four yeah Martin Foller says Hans played amazing Ramesh Balakrishnan says he loves FTH boards and Anita Mahon says hurrah she's a Norwegian backgammon player, mm -hmm. so obviously she's cheering for Hans. Oh, six is fan. I guess cube is coming now. Yep, this is the right cube. But it's actually a huge pass here. Well, Hideaki is leading uh, every aspect of the game. He's uh, leading the pit, uh, he has better ball, he has only one man back, and Hans is one on the ball. Yeah. It could be you know, take pass in money game, but uh, it's a huge pass in a three-point match. three-point match. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the transcriber is trying to show us some cube information here. I don't really think it's necessary. Yeah, I mean, we. I think we could see a take here. Finally, Hans is put to the test with a very difficult decision. He has, he has had the, the easier decisions mm -hmm. so far, uh, but now for the first time, there's actually a little bit of blunder potential going on. Yeah, it's... There's, there's one, okay, he passes. The, the one thing that I notice about this position is the fact that you have four and four checkers on the six and the eight point. Mm -hmm. It makes the long-term timing and purity better than if you have five and three. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that, uh, this a lot. When you have this formation, your back game, or not necessarily the back game with two anchors, but the game from contact is, is just quite strong. Uh, so, but he did find the pass. Good, yeah, good yeah, play from yeah, Hans. Yeah. Very good play. So, so far he got everything right. Yeah. It's very uh, important decisions. Okay, what about this slot? Oh, wow. This is uh, interesting yeah, play. There's the duplication. That, that's what but you I want. I go with this. This is more safe. Oh, play. actually, slotting is a better play. Wow. Yeah, because of the duplication. But everything is so close, it doesn't yeah. really matter. But I wouldn't find a slotting play. That's really wonderful. Okay, we're if getting. You could find it. We're getting compliments from Giuseppe Di Apolito. By the way, guys, remember to like and share this video so we can spread the backgammon love. If you haven't liked already, smash that like button. And uh, remember to subscribe to the Backgammon Galaxy oh, he did find the right YouTube play. channel. Wow, well played Hideaki. So this is an expert play he mm -hmm. just made. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice play. So obviously he's able to play very high, high level Backgammon. Yeah. Um, but of course anyone can make a big mistake in any given situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of decision randomness as well. Hideaki was probably uh, not really sure about the blunders he made, and then he was kind of unlucky to, to make the wrong decisions. Of course, if he had been in his A game, he probably would have found the best decisions. But there's a little bit of randomness also in the decisions we make as human beings. Okay, 6-3, that's a... By the way, Hans's 1-5 is an excellent play too. Not easy yeah, to find. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, duplicating the ace. Yes and uh, stop him from making a five point, which is exactly happening right now. Yeah. And the thing is that Hans is actually playing the blitz and the race game plan here, yeah, while yeah, yeah. Hideaki is playing the priming and the timing game plan. 
So the hit on the ace point is not that bad. He has 10 checkers in the zone, and he took away the tempo. Okay, that's a good shot. He t hits the slot, mm -hmm. sends Hideaki back in the race, mm -hmm. slows down his development. Okay, he makes the... Yeah, it's the best play once again. And now... Uh, oh, to a six is in the air ball. Tricky six. Oh, that's not the right idea, Hideaki. You don't want to hit loose and deuce point here. Oh, you do! Oh, you just do? in lack of better? Wow, I'm surprised. I would never make that play. It's so ugly to make that play when you have seven checkers in the zone. But I guess, what else do you do? Everything else leaves the full initiative. Yep. Yeah, this gives him yeah. every roll. A very understandable error there from Hideaki. It wasn't big. I think I would have made the same error, but actually the, the tempo hit was the right idea. Okay, this is uh, another difficult play here. He can make seven and five. Oh, yeah. This is probably the first mistake he commits. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he had to switch. Because he's playing the blitz game plan, not the priming game plan. Also taking away some of his numbers. Oh yeah. He's up 21 pips. He has that blood on the ace point, which hurts him in terms of priming. And he, as Mochi pointed out, he didn't take away half of a roll mm -hmm. from Hideaki. If he, this is a, not really a good roll from Hideaki. He had lots of rolls who made the five point, for instance. Not a horrible roll, but uh, okay. So usually it's better to hit and make an inner point at the same time. But Hideaki is really playing the time, uh, the priming game plan here. So hitting on the deuce is just too deep. Yes, this is the right idea. Mm -hmm. You want to go for purity and prime structure. Mm -hmm. Very good play from Hideaki. Yeah. Does a miscue? Yeah. Miscue yeah. by Hans. Yeah. Yes, he's. Three away, two away, yeah. that's an aggressive score. Yeah. It was, oh, now it's a Q for sure. I think now he will see it. And now he will see it. Yeah. Because he rolled 2 5 and he, you know, he actually rolled 1 5, which is not a good number. Is that the right ace, Mochi? Rather than slotting the 5? It's oh, difficult. Nope, slotting is better. Slotting is better. Okay, okay. 30 error from. Okay, oh, this, oh, is a, oh, this is a Q, oh, Hans. Hans, you, you gotta stop it. Yeah, okay. Oh, he's, oh, he's thinking. Okay. He's thinking. I would like to see his body language here. No, he stopped saying uh, it's very good. Yeah, uh, exactly. Because uh, keep forgetting a cube cause a lot of PR. Yes, and this is a big one. This, yeah. is, a, this is definitely a big cube. Mm -hmm. Three away, two away is the mini gammon go score. Yeah. He has to be aggressive. Yeah, he's thinking, wait a minute, I'm down three away, two away. Yeah. And I'm up in the race. I have four point board. I mean, I have four climb and I have an anchor. He has no anchor, so... This is exactly a, a position you want. Yes. I think he's going to find the cube. Mm -hmm. But now he's just counting the race, making sure. He did miss that very sharp cube, the last roll, mm -hmm. which only the, the very sharp players will find. But this one, OK, good. Okay. He does okay. find it. I think this was, was an easy cube to find, so mm -hmm. I'm happy that he, mm -hmm. he didn't make the blunder. Mm -hmm. Hideaki took fast. He mm -hmm. knows this is a take. Most problems are solved just by pausing, you know, yeah. 10 seconds. <laughs> Most blunders come in from instant play, yeah. without thinking. And okay, big ace, so now he has, he has a game forever. I would just come down from the 9 here, maximize flexibility. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, it it's... Be right. It seems close between the top three. Mm -hmm. It is a mutual holding game, so usually you don't want to leave any shots. Race matters a lot. Mm -hmm. But here, Hideaki is already down in the race, and he has that extra plot to shoot at mm -hmm. in the, the inner board. I didn't get to see which play was the right one. Uh, he played 6-2. to two. Okay, at least 6-2 to two wasn't a mistake, so probably that was the right idea. Oh, he made an idea play. Six oh, yeah. Hideaki caught him mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. Very good. Double force, that's a great shot. It's very good. Catching up in the race and mm -hmm. building the beautiful five point. Again, this is a position type that favors uh, Hans since he's leading in the PR. Mm -hmm. Of course, he doesn't know this, but mm -hmm. the mutual holding games are among the simpler 
position types. Yeah, yeah. And this is a fine wow. roll. Wow. Beautiful roll. Yeah. Another beautiful roll. Yeah, let's get in closer. He doesn't want to give up that race equity, Hideaki. Mm -hmm. He keeps mm -hmm. rolling double fours. So he's counting the race again. Probably. It's just two pips now. Okay. Two pips. You don't want to give any shots here, Hans? Yes, that's the right idea. Okay. Since we don't play with the dice on checker rule, he has to re-roll. By the way, both players have plenty of time left. Yes. Um, you don't want to give up any points, so just play from the 11. But the race is close enough. If Hans is leading, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just a simple play. It's just a simple play, mm. yeah. You don't want to give up the eight point. No. For no reason. Especially when the race is so close. Yeah, and don't leave any shots. Yeah. Correct. Good. Uh, Martin Falle asked, how slow slash fast does Hideaki normally play? Do you know this, Mochi? Um, he plays okay. He's not too slow. Wow. Sometimes he spends some time. And roll yeah. on time, actually. Yes. Um, but my feeling is that he try not to be in that situation. Okay. He plays really wow. fast in the beginning of the game. Okay. Maybe that uh, actually, yeah, maybe he was a little bit stressed in the beginning of the game, trying to mm -hmm. play a little bit fast. I think that uh, Hans has actually played very method, meth meth what do you say, like very structurally mm -hmm. and and calmly. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's been playing neither mm -hmm. at, uh, fast. Mm -hmm. Probably more, I would say he's probably played slow and well, mm -hmm. but he still has six minutes left on the clock. So maybe this is just an in indication that he didn't have the hardest decisions in mm -hmm. this match. Mm -hmm. He kind of ha had an easy time, and of course also has played extraordinarily well. Yeah, so he's down to the last point now. He doesn't want to roll a six. Okay, so Hans should just avoid the six one five one four one. He does, and this is a gin position. Mm -hmm. And we're not gonna see a gammon either. Very easy to save the gammon here. Basically a gin position. That's a great roll because you get that ace, which is a decision <laughs> in this format. Yeah, okay, 3-1, and it's gin. This is a this tricky ace thing for PL is uh, one of the weakness of the format. It is. Yeah. We it, need to. It doesn't really reflect any skill of the backgammon at yeah. all. Do you have any solutions to overcome this? Uh, oh, we gotta, this problem? we gotta ask Zapier to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotta come up with a way to figure out whether yeah. a decision is actually a decision. Mm -hmm. At the moment, a decision is defined whether there is an equity difference between plays, mm -hmm. because that's the objective way of defining a, uh, de uh, a decision. But for a human being, some decisions are not decisions. It's just yeah. obvious. Yeah. So it shouldn't really count in the error rate, but at the moment, it does. Okay. So we're at game six, opening game here. Great shot from Hans. So this is uh, okay. called the uh, Gammon save score or Gammon goal score for Weather. Weather really needs to win Gammon, otherwise he has to win one more game. So Gammon value is sky high in this game. Yeah, this is a tricky play because he doesn't have a blitz formation. That's why he's considering not making the ace here. And actually, he shouldn't make the ace. He should make the three point, which is more pure. Oh, that's one, two. Oh, he does find it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he came up with the right play there, going back and forward. <laughs> but in the end, he did find the, the best play, which was actually a very difficult play. A fan. OK, oh, now yeah. he is going to cover. Definitely. What about three the three? down, maybe? Adding more builders? I don't think splitting is important here. Yeah. 
Good play from Hideaki. Oh, Another fan. That's huge. That's huge. Oh, wow. Now yes. he has a real chance to yes. complete the blitz. 6 4. He makes a 4. Yes, that's a great shot, actually. Now it's. Uh, he really needs to enter yeah. here and consolidate. Oh, 5 he 1. Does. That's a great okay. shot. Okay, that's but fine. the blitz is not over yet. No, no. He's still under attack. Okay, he might think, well, I could hit, but uh, no, too much. I think that was a good play, right? Yeah, it's a good play. Yes, you want to. He's playing gammon go, which means mm -hmm. he's playing just as much to avoid losing a gammon than he is to win the game, because there's a 50% match-winning chance either way. Wow, that. that's a super joker here. So um, you could what go a roll. for eight point, or you could go for the. That's blitz. the wrong idea, Hans. No, he's just checking. I th hope he's just checking. He's just checking. I don't think he's gonna do it. This is a horrible idea mm -hmm. at this score. Mm -hmm. You have no value of winning a gammon. Mm -hmm. You should just bring your checkers home, mm -hmm. win the game with as little volatility as possible. Okay, I think he discarded it. He just wanted to have a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't uh, miss any moves. Yes. So right now he's considering whether... Oh no, he's still going back to that hit on the ace. This is not the time for the double hit, Hans, and making the ace point. Good, this is the right play. You don't want to get hit. You're leaving uh, a couple of doubles from the roof, and and you're not playing a blitz game here. You're playing a, you're trying to avoid losing gammon and just win the game. Well, he still have five minutes left, and uh, this is the position that he wanted to spend some time on it. It's a very important decision. It is. So I guess he's counting the race. Um, he is. Uh, what's the race going to be after this move? I think he's up 16 pips. Yeah. That's my guess. I, I, don't, I don't count, but uh, he was Sorry. down 15 before the race. Yeah. So that's my guess. Oh, no, 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 no. no. He keeps <laughs> getting tempted yeah, by the ace yeah. point. It, no, it's just no such way. a wrong idea. It's such a wrong idea. You, you want to blitz him? I mean, he has a four-point board, so don't do this. Yeah. If you do blitz, then sometimes you have to hit rules, and uh, you might hit... Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, four-point board is so scary. Yeah. Even double threes from the bar. With if score is reversed, if he's five, I mean, he's two away, then this play must be correct. Yeah, but, uh, that's a whole different yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, Hans. He did find, he, he right did play. find the right play. Mm -hmm. Oof. I think he was making all the Norwegian spectators sweat there. <laughs> okay, so... But Aha, Hide Hideaki actually wants to induce contact here, so... Usually you just make the 20 point, but at I this score... I think he should make a 20 still. He still have a backman on 24. Um, because if you don't make a 5 point, then you give him 1-3. Yeah, but look, know. he's looking at it. The contact play. I know, I know. I, know. I like the fact that he's looking at it. I think mm -hmm. actually it's a difficult play at this score. Hideaki is aware of the, the match uh, theory. He wants to induce contact, get into a gammonish position, and he doesn't care at all about losing a, a gammon himself. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly the time where these creative plays might be right. But as we can see from the XG an mm -hmm. analysis, it isn't. You've got to make the 20 point. That's mm -hmm. the right, uh, right play. Just giving him a 1-3 on double ace is uh, too, too big. Yeah. That argument alone. Mm -hmm. And he does have that contact. Yeah, he's going to make the creative play. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought that was a very difficult play. And unfortunately for Hideaki, he chose the wrong decision. The PR for this match is going to probably be gone, but for the average PR, every decision matters. Okay. Yeah, he could have made a double hit, but he chose the safe yeah. play, which is also he the correct tempted. play. Oh, what about this one? Now the race actually becomes a factor again. Yeah. So he, okay, he's no, coming out. Now he definitely need anchor, I think. No? Oh no, this it, is a correct play. Oh yeah, wow. he's coming out on the other side of the avalanche. Mm -hmm. Maximizing contact, staying back. Yeah, it's actually a beautiful play. Mm -hmm. Coming out with bad 20. numbers. Yeah, so lots of bad numbers. Like 6-3. 6-5 is pretty mm -hmm. bad as mm -hmm. well. Leaves some shots from the bar. 6-1 gives a direct shot. 
uh, like five two, three two. So yeah, the right play is to come out with the four, this one, and then come down. Okay, mm -hmm. so he goes for full contact here. It's a little bit too much. Yeah. The idea was right, but it, it's a bit of an overplay to keep the blood on the on the mm -hmm. midpoint. Mm -hmm. He doesn't gain anything by staying on the midpoint. Yeah. I remember I made a similar blunder against you, Mochi, some yeah. years ago in uh -huh. Cyprus, and you called me out over the board. Uh -huh, yeah. You told me exactly this thing, that there's uh -huh. no gain from staying with that <laughs> contact blood there. So why do you leave it there? And you were right. Okay, 3-2. The double match point play is probably uh, going to be uh, just to play safe. So why would he consider anything? I mean, what is he considering hitting on the ace here? No, I don't think so. He's torn between h3 and starting 8. Ah, yes, of course. Of course, yeah. Two down is too big. But, but two uh, down is uh, out of question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I, I didn't consider the, the... H3 is actually much better. Okay. Oh. I, I would play Double force doesn't make... Yeah, you, it's a zero position. Mm -hmm. H3 is a zero position. Yeah, Whereas but still, you, you gotta pay at some time. It's some actually, anyway. wow, it's big. No, 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 I don't think you need it. Look how big this is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, this is too much. It's yeah, six, three, six, can, four, and double yeah. fours. It's you five numbers. Four number, five oh. Number. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 this is a huge blunder. Double blunder. Wow, Hideaki is actually just one blunder away now mm -hmm. in the PR race. Well, maybe, maybe one and a half. <laughs> maybe one and a half, yeah. <laughs> This was good for Hideaki. Yeah. And bad for Hans. Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's still playing at a 1.67. Yeah. Okay, so. What is this now? At least one and a half blunder. Again, he, he wants to minimize. Oof. So these four numbers. I want to see the hint from the analysis. Okay, it this seems that was a good move. Mm -hmm. It was a good move. Now, this was probably a very small error. Yeah. The race is very close after this roll. Wow, double fours. Mm -hmm. Gotta be a huge roll. So one, for sure. Yes. To make the four points. You never want to leave a shot with a, when your opponent has mm -hmm. a full in a board. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a clear play, but I think he's just going through all the combinations, making sure that he sure. doesn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. One, two, no. You go back, yes. yes. <laughs> I don't understand why he doesn't save the blood first. Thank you. One, I mean, that's going to be... Two, three. And yes, four. exactly. It's, a, it's actually an obvious play. And this is very flexible. He has only one bad number, I think, a 6-1. Everything else is fine. Okay. He's taking his time. I mean, I don't mind. He has still two and a half minutes on the clock. Mm -hmm. So he has the, the luxury of taking some time here. The double fours are... Probably uh, the the most difficult role in general in backgammon, and he did find the the best move eventually, How which we expected. How did he play this one? Uh, yeah. Oh, you yeah, because of the up. race. The race, race is on the two pips. Yeah, so he needs to step up. Mm -hmm. It's such a clear play to step up. Yeah, obviously Weda has the pip count in his mind. But you see, all. Oh, after all, he grinded down his PR to below 4 anyways. Yes, <laughs> like we expected. That's Grandmaster. Yes. So we are excited that he played like 7 in the beginning, but uh, it doesn't matter in the end. It's the uh, same, same ending. Yeah. You got to come up, Hideaki. This is such a clear play. Yeah. Because of the race and minimizing the damage from all the numbers. Mm -hmm. If you Yeah, good play. Very good play. So Hans either wants something really small or something really big. Did. Wow, that is a joker. Yeah, looks like uh, ending of the game. It looks like a 2-0 lead to, mm -hmm. to Hans. Unless he rolls 6-1. He doesn't. doesn't. Rolls perfectly well. Now easy, easy game. Yeah. We just slot the uh, hit on the ace point and rolling the prime. Yes, there's no risk to rolling the prime here. No. Four. Oh, okay. Okay, he could actually just. If you were playing for the gammon, you would go fishing here. Just leave the blood hoping no, to get I, hit. This is a better play. Even at double match point? No, because there's no bad numbers for him. If he makes ace point, double six will leave a shot, double five leaves a very ugly position. That's true. 
and you called it mochi. It's correct. Yeah, that you was don't want to make fun. the ace point here. You you don't need. You have the luxury of not giving yeah. away anything in terms of flexibility. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no risk here, and here you can play double sixes, double fives. And maybe Hans get a little nervous now. <laughs> I can feel. Yes. Yeah, he spent uh, a lot of the time on trivia play here. If it's in a shred, he will make a play in one second. Oh. Okay, small she makes mistake. a small mistake here. Four one, so it probably doesn't matter. So his winning chance would be like ninety eight percent, ninety seven percent here. Yeah, just play safe. Daniel Sørensen says that uh, Hans Liebe is originally from Bergen, Norway, but he moved to Oslo 20 plus years ago, and he thinks that the, the backgammon community in Oslo deserves a partial credit for Hans' impressive results here at the UBC. Mm -hmm. They do have a very strong community in Norway. We had, was it four grandmasters from Norway participating in the UBC? Mm -hmm. That's actually impressive. Six five. So Hideaki wants to fan here. Okay, this is going to be two zero. Yeah, for Hans Liebe. Mm -hmm. And very strong start for PL. Incredibly strong start. Yeah, he played yeah. so well yeah. in this match. He Hans outplayed Liebe. Hideaki by two PL. Yeah. So essentially, Hideaki needs to outplay him by two PL in the next match. He does. He needs two points. Wow. This is a great advantage for Hans. Oh my god. So Hideaki needs to win next match and outplay him by PL and outplay average PL too. Right? right. Yeah. So he so needs he to outplay him more oh than no. he outplayed him wow. here basically. So his yeah. winning chance would be, I don't know, it's a little, little low. It's yeah. probably in the 20%? 20, yeah, 20, 20, 20. Between 20, 23. Yeah. It's, he's a big favorite now, Hans. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if the players are going to have a short break or if they are ready to just continue immediately. Yeah, we have some Norwegians uh, <coughs> congratulating Hans. Yeah, it is a <laughs> yeah, what a what a uh, what a performance he's putting on here in the mm -hmm. semi-final. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like they are taking a break now. Okay, so they are taking a break. Mm -hmm. So Mochi, what do you think about uh, this match we just saw and the players? Well, um, I'm very, very surprised that uh, Hideaki played, um, made uh, two big blunders in our uh, game of the match. Uh, but uh, we discussed that it could be come from um, nerves. Um, but it, I think he overcome that nerve already. But I, I don't know how that result, now player seeing the result, what they play in the first match, that must affect their their performance in the next match, right? That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe um, Hans wants to play conservative because he wants to protect the lead, which is actually a very dangerous idea, mm -hmm. uh, but it could happen. So it's really interesting to see the next match. We saw that from Dirk Schiemann, mm -hmm. who was leading on the average PR before the very final round mm -hmm. of day two, and he did have that mindset. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go in there and mm -hmm. hoping for a simple game, yeah. doing everything he can to keep it simple, even making some mistakes just to get into simple games. And he actually blew it up. Mm -hmm. He played a, a 5.4, yeah. and uh, and got and Hideaki qualified for the PR with two pips in the average PR, mm -hmm. 2.77 versus 2.79, mm -hmm. I believe it was mm -hmm. something like this. Mm -hmm. So it can be dangerous to co go in with that mindset uh, yeah. that yeah. you wanna mm -hmm. just keep it simple, protect your lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's interesting. I think in a short moment we will have the match file available to us here in the commentator room. So we could actually go through some positions with the viewers from uh, some of the highlights. Let's do if, it. But I'm waiting here for the match file to arrive. I think, let me see if I can get it. Um. On the other hand, for Hideaki, it's much easier for him to play in the next game. He just want to play his best um, as usual, and he doesn't need to think anything else. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm trying to to tell the the transcript the, the transcription team upstairs 
that they should send us the match. I don't know why they haven't done it already. But we're trying to get it here, and then we can put it on the screen. Yeah. That would be a nice time to, here in the break, to look at the, some of the blunders. Right. Yeah, but do you think Hideaki is going to be disappointed with his performance in this match? Yeah, obviously. Um, but uh, he will overcome it. But you remember that the uh, end of the last year, we did Mochi Challenge 2, uh, Kerry against, uh, against Meijo. And uh, they played four games. And after the third game, Meijo was reading average PR and entire points. So only way Kerry could win is win PR and match and average PR. And that is exactly happened. That's true. So and that happened. Yeah, and that happened. And I think actually he was a major was a bigger favorite yeah. at that spot yeah. than uh, then Hans Major is here. took like five hundred blunder yeah. you know it's unbelievable mistake he did. Okay. And so he blew up his PR so we have the match file here. There's no safe zone in this game. It's actually more than Hobe who sends it. He is faster than our own crew. That is amazing. So let's put it on the screen one moment. Okay, so here we have the match. So if our producer could show us the monitor here, then we can show the viewers. Okay, so they're trying to get it ready. Give us a moment, then we'll have it ready. We can prepare some of the blunders here. Um, yeah, this was the first one. Yeah, this is a very interesting spot. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the format so far, uh, Mochi, in this in this tournament, in the Contender tournament? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's very well thought, uh, nice format. Not only result, not only PR. It's a uh, well balanced. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. Um, we we have here uh, the, among the the four semi finalists, we we have basically three of the very best PRs in the tournament mm -hmm. players, mm -hmm. and then we have one. You could say underdog mm -hmm. with Hans. Of mm -hmm. course, he's played a 4.0. But look at the Hans, what he did here. He's he, just improving. Yeah. And he, he did the same thing from day one to yeah. day two. He improved his, his performance. Uh -huh. His error rate got went down and down yeah. and down. And it seems he's doing the same yeah. today. He played 1.7 against Hideaki in the semifinal. So what can we ask? Yeah, he's performing amazingly. Let's see if he can keep it up. It's really interesting now. And then later we have the uh, the other semi-final, which is probably one of the biggest matches of the year mm -hmm. between Thomas Christensen and Michi-san. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you see this this matchup? Well, I I, I'm, I don't know who is favorite uh, in between Michi and Thomas. Um, it's really interesting to see how they put it up. Yeah, that is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. So the match will be on at 6 o'clock today, mm -hmm. local time here in Gibraltar. Uh, that's in, how many hours is that? That's like four and a half hours from now. So all of the viewers, stay tuned. We're going to have the great match of, uh, between Michi and Thomas Christensen at 6 o'clock today. So remember to subscribe, hit the like button, share the link with your friends. Uh, and I think also the players are actually about to be ready soon. I hope we can just go through some of the blunders here before they start. Okay, then we have our technical crew is are doing well to set up the stream, the the XG here, but we don't have it ready quite yet. Okay, so Daniel Sanson asks, should we either try to compli complicate the next match? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's a dangerous idea. He can still win by 2PR two, two by playing normal. Yeah, we have Tadja Pilesen saying, uh, playing some back games, question mark. <laughs> Hans was the back game instructor for the Norwegian national team. So he knows a thing or two about back games. Oh, okay, so it's not going to work. <laughs> but, no, I yeah. mean, he, where does PR average 2.7 and Hans is 4.0? So there's already 1.3 different. So he could outplay him by 2.5 PR. It's, it's doable, just play normal, you know, just uh, need a little bit of luck. Yeah, you need some luck. It is, 
You could do some things to try to get the game into a complicated position. Mm -hmm. For instance, you need to slot with 2-1 in mm -hmm. the opening, yeah. hoping for a back game mm -hmm. where the, the volatility of the PR goes mm -hmm. way up because mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot of complicated decisions. But it's tricky. You don't want to make too many mistakes along yeah, the way to right, get there. Right, right, right. That's not that easy. Okay, so the, we have the, the monitor ready here and we can go through some of the positions. So let's see. The first blunder of the match was this one. And you were actually tempted, Mochi, to make yeah, the same play. Yeah, this is like, quite difficult. I mean, uh, but I guess you want to come out from 21. Um, the best play is coming out from the 21. Yeah. Because if you come out from 20, now Black has two good sequence. One, making a five point. Two, making a four point. Either way, he's fine. That's a good point. And, and the fives, look at how the fives are play, play mm -hmm. between the two moves. If yeah. he comes out there, then the fives are not that effective. Okay, then we have this one was the big one. Yeah. It's actually a no double. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Reda probably it, has like 20, 20 X numbers to hit, but uh, Weda's anchor is still climbed uh, behind the five climb. Yeah, so this is what I categorize as a blitz versus prime position, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the prime is just too strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does look a little bit ugly having that dilly builder on the on Hans's four point. However, the structure at the moment is super strong. Let's say whether lords do something and the black fund. Is it like a market loser? It could be not a market loser. It could be not a market loser. Yeah. I don't think it is, actually. Yeah. The prime <laughs> is too strong. Yeah. Sometimes the weather doesn't hit at all, and sometimes uh, Hans just uh, come in. Yeah. So he, that's why this is such a big mistake. He is uh, at least two steps away, actually, mm -hmm. from having a market loss. Right. Not one step away. That was a big one. And then we had the, the other big one. It was in game hey. three, I believe. Yeah, that was most... Oh, no, it was in game... It was 4-0, by the way. Oh, no, yeah, 4-0. He was oh yeah, here it, is. yeah. here it is. Here it is. This I have game. no explanation. I, I don't know why he took this. Yeah. This is a quite basic position. Um, Black is leading 25 pips with bar point made. And uh, actually only double sixes leaves the, uh, the blood. Everything else plays a safe. It's quite standard, so you don't want to take the cube at 4-0 reading. So I really don't know. And he took it quite fast actually. He's, I think he spent Hans's time thinking about it as well. That's true. But still, yeah. it's a, such a crucial decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, as, we, as we talk about here, it, we, for us, this is such a clear pass. Mm -hmm. And it's not a complicated decision. Mm -hmm. It's straight out of the ref reference playbook. Mm -hmm. When you have 25 pips down in a 20-point in a holding game, and the opponent has the beautiful structure mm -hmm. in front of you, mm -hmm. that's when you got to pass it. So, yeah. This was an ugly one. Yeah, he shouldn't have made this one. Um, then we had the cube action where this cube from Hans. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this cube? Well, although technically it's not really a cube, um, I I do think it's a good cube um, b because uh, Hans is reading uh, down to four. And uh, yellow has a failed blitz poten uh, structure, uh, open five point, five point and four point. And uh, Hans is reading a pip count. So just because Hans has two bloods, that's why this is not exactly a double. Uh, but it, I would say it, it's a good double, a practical double. I think most people don't double this position. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite sharp. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I liked it as well. Um, what else did we have here? Then we had the, this position, mm -hmm. the cube at uh, at four, uh, three away, three away, mm -hmm. where the match match uh, theory says that you have to be more aggressive with the cube and you mm -hmm. have to be more conservative with the ticks because it's a very short match. Um, and he did find the pass here, yeah. Hans. Yeah, it's an uh, excellent play by Hans. This is actually a money take, but at this score, three away, three away. It's, it became a big pass, and Hans exactly know what he's doing. Yeah, so very good play from, yeah. from Hans. Mm -hmm. What I was noticing about this position was the stacks on six and four, which has four and four checkers, which makes his long-term contact value better 
because it's easier to play pure in a mm -hmm. priming game. And as well, I noticed the stack on uh, Hideaki's uh, midpoint. Oh, we're ready. We're ready to go. Yeah, so okay, the second, second match are, is about to get kicked off. Okay, so this is exciting. Hideaki needs to come out firing here. Okay. Opening roll is made. The take point scoreboard is a little bit off its mark here. Somebody pushed the scoreboard so it's not perfectly aligned, but it's okay. Double fours, that's a powerful roll. Fast Joker. Yes. I would make a four point, I think. I think it's a clear play, mm -hmm. just to make the four point. You have that extra number. builder on the eight point. Mm -hmm. So she found five, six is a good number. Very good number. Six, one. How do you play the ace? I, I cannot stand yeah. the temptation. Uh -huh. I need to hit here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just for the efficiency. And okay. Oh, that was would have been a good shot, 5-6, but unfortunately for Yaki, we don't play with the dice on checker rule. What happened here? Could it be a double? Oh, it's too early? Probably one step too early. Mm -hmm. That's a bad shot, 4-2. He doesn't get to lock down the 5-point. So how do you play this one, Mochi? Maybe hit the ace point and step oh, up. That is the right idea. Mm -hmm. That's the expert play. It's not an easy play to find over the board. You have many combinations here, but all of the best moves contain the five to one hit. Very nice instincts by hands. Good play. Three, two. Okay, so here's a decision for Hideaki. Does he make the 11 or does he hit loose? Probably the right idea, right, Mochi? No. Mm. That was a blunder. Oh, wow, that was wow, a blunder. That was a blunder. He has so to he hit. Has to hit. Yeah, because he's down in the race and he, Hans has a blot on the ace point. Even if he got hit, he can have a double anchor. Yes, the priming play was not That's good. Interesting. That was a blunder from Hideaki. Hideaki is off to a horrible Hideaki, start. Hideaki doesn't need a blunder. Oh, he's <laughs> really, really bad. Oh, double fives. Catching up a little bit in the race. So we have to remind the viewers that Hideaki needs to win both PR and the a score yes. to, to win the semifinal. It's a tall order, yeah. especially starting out with a blunder like this. Yeah, I would have liked yeah. to see the analysis. We didn't get to see how big. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's big. Okay, 116 100. million well, points. 100 is still um, doable. Actually, he also missed out on an opportunity to, to complicate the games. Mm. Because it, right, if he makes right, the hit, right. he might have more checkers mm. sent back. Mm -hmm. It kind of compounds the, the error. Okay, meanwhile, he's thinking of a double five. Yeah. So for viewers just tuning in, this is the ultimate backgammon championship 2020 contender tournament semi-final match between Hans Liby from Norway and Hideaki Ueda from Japan. It's been an incredible tournament this this far, and uh, it's we're about to find our first finalist. If you haven't already liked this video and subscribe to the Backgammon YouTube channel, do it. And please share the video with all of your friends on Facebook, because this is one of the big moments of 2020 in the backgammon world. Okay, so what, what's happening here, Mochi? Hans is thinking about the cube, and he is correct to do so. He's up uh, 11 pips, and the, uh, he has some market bruises. He has the five checkers on the midpoint, though. That's yeah. kind of hurting him. Yeah. If he had just one of those checkers Oops, on the eight one or six. Oops, not a good number. Yeah, there we see the weakness of the stack. And this is difficult to play. You can hit lose or you can play oh, save. Oh, no, 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 no. That is ugly. Mm -hmm. This is ugly, yeah. I don't think he, he's going to make this play. Mm -hmm. It's a four-point board versus four-point board. Mm -hmm. This is understandable. It's a blunder, but it's understandable. 15 numbers. Yes, that's a blunder. This is great news for Hideaki. Mm -hmm. He just equalized in the PRS and a huge shot. This is good news from Hideaki. Yeah. Now he's going to double. I think it's a double pass. Five pips. Yeah. One man back. 
blitz potential. But he, he, his position is so ugly. He, oh, he it's actually too good, Mochi. Oh no, wow. It's too good to drop. That's a difficult one to find. Yeah, I think he would double. Yes. Uh, <gasps> I find it almost... Uh, I, yeah, it's very unlikely, I think, that uh, Hans will find the take here. Mm -hmm. But at least uh, Hideaki is giving him the decision. Mm -hmm. He's giving him the opportunity yeah. to make a big blunder. Yeah, this is a good trade, you know, giving up the 36 equity, um, trying to get 500. <laughs> you never know when yeah. you get something you mi know. mixed up in your neural mm -hmm. net. He might think, okay, I'm done, only five pips, I have four point ball, you know. <laughs> I have a lot of contact. <laughs> yeah, but the truth is uh, he can get... Oh, <gasps> oh, wow! Oh, he did it. Wow! Jesus. That's huge. That is huge. Wow, if he and he Hideaki makes the close out with double six. The match is all open now. This is completely opened up the semi-final. Huge blunder That's from Hans amazing. Hans Hideaki amazing. gave him the opportunity to make the blunder. <laughs> we have a lot of comments coming in now. Oh no, from Christopher Hedberg. Wow. That was bad for the Norwegian. Very good news from Hideaki. He is in the game. It's he very might be, open now. He might be a favorite. I mean, a PR battle. But he needs to win both I know, still. I know, I know. He needs to win I'm both. not saying he's favorite to win yeah. the semifinal, but uh, in the PR village. I think he is. He is the favorite now. He, both in terms of winning the PR point in this one and in the terms of average PR, but it's the gonna be close. Is, it's going to be close. He needs to win this match, but if he can make uh, win the gammon here, which definitely looks good, he's a big favorite to win the gammon, he, he might have a chance. <laughs> this is funny. One of those positions where, I mean, even though you're a grandmaster, you might get something completely mixed up in your brain, yeah. get some bad ideas. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you take a 500 blunder. Really bad. He needs to enter badly. Oh no, that's that was crucial. Now the gammon. Wow, the gammon. The gammon is sealed unless he gets extremely lucky. No, I actually don't think he can make it. It's basically impossible to mm. save the gammon mm. from here. Yeah, it's very yes. So four zero mm. to Hideaki. Mm. Oof. Most likely, that's going to be the biggest blunder we're going to see today. <laughs> 500. That was a really big one. So, once again, reminds the, uh, the match between Kerry and Major, where Kerry took a 500 pass. You it's know? the same. <laughs> exactly the same thing. Yeah. You cannot take it easy in this format. Yeah. Every decision matters. Okay, so Hideaki. Uh, made uh, one blunder, but still managed to to squeeze out a 4.0 mm -hmm. PR in the in the in the game, and obviously Hans plays at a 16 from that horrible kinda, yeah, yeah. horrible five double blunder. Okay, five four. Now Hideaki is leading this match, so he's just splitting the back checkers, trying to get into a holding game, consolidate a race lead. 5-4, this is exactly what the leader in the match wants to see. Okay, 3-1. Three, three, Slightly duplicated, but of course he's going to make his 5-point hitting and building. 4-1. No other play. He's got a hit, unstack the heavy 6-point. Classic opening game style. 3-2, another great shot from Hideaki. He secured a very strong edge here in the opening game. And now we're heading into the middle game. No anger from Hans. I guess he should come out with a five, duplicating a four. Yeah, it's also the only play that doesn't f kind of front load his spare checker distribution. It's the only net. Nah, this is ugly. He's staying back with three checkers and he's stacking in his front position. This is the only natural play, which, okay, he does make it. Ah, actually, it's close. Mm -hmm. I take my words back. It was the best play to come out, but it was not as ugly as I first thought. So play 13 to 8. 
Okay, what about this one, Mochi? Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to hit uh, three, then six. Where's the six? You can come slot, down. Maybe. Slot the seven. You do have the stronger inner board, and the, the, the gain is huge. But you're making the sixes good from the bar. Oh, 2011. Ah. Do nothing. Do nothing. I guess because of your race lead is already so substantial, mm -hmm. you don't like getting hit. Well, the problem with the hitting is leaving too many shots. Three, yes, two, exactly. Five. You have a big race lead. You don't want to. Wow, that's huge. Mm -hmm. But understandable error from Hideaki, and it wasn't that big. I think of an error. Very difficult play. Four two. two another okay. great shot from One step Hans. Closer to the cube. Hideaki really wants something good here. Mm -hmm. Two six. Of course, he's going to split the back checkers. It's very close to double, but it's not quite double, I don't think. Yeah, you're right, Mochi. It's exactly what it is. It's like half a blunder away from, mm -hmm. from a cube. A little bit more than half a blunder. Um, he doesn't quite have what it takes yet. Okay, so now he could actually choose between two game plans here. Is he going to go for the more pure prime and race? Right. Or is he going <laughs> to go for the blitz? This is a difficult one. Because before the roll, you would definitely say that Hans had a priming position here. Mm -hmm. He has purity, he has efficiency, doesn't have any stacks. But now all of a sudden, the double five. That's you such can a great make 11 on a three point quite beautifully. Or you could come out with a back checker. But look at the okay. equities. It's two plays wow. are almost tie. It's almost a tie. Yeah. So this is a very difficult decision over mm -hmm. the board. It's two completely different game plans. Mm -hmm. But the computer tells us that it's actually a tie, almost a tie between mm -hmm. the two. Well, it's good for Hans. And no matter what he does, it's not going to be a big error. Yeah, luckily mm -hmm. that's the case. Because choosing between two, between two game plans is not easy. And sometimes it really has blunder potential which this one doesn't. So just don't spend time on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it was the second, no, it was the third best move, 31 error. Okay. And a fan from uh, the Arc. Pass, I guess. 10 checkers in the zone, uh -huh. you're on the bar, you're up 4-0. I mean, it, it could be a take for money, but uh, this score, no, no, it's a big pass. I agree with you, Mochi. And uh, Hideaki not going to take this, I think. That would be surprising. Okay, Hideaki's taking his time. He's taking a sip of water from his, his uh, plastic bottle. The pip count as well is hugely in Hans's favor. Of course, Hideaki is thinking about his contact value here. If I manage to anchor up, I will have so much contact value. And I have a nice and pure front structure, good playable game, but the blitz value is just too big. No, I mean, not for zero. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, take, uh, it's actually a take for money, but not at this score. Yes. Good play from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. He took his time, mm -hmm. made sure he's... Mm -hmm. As we expected, uh, this is Hideaki. Yeah. I mean, he, he's going to play a game in a second set. I, I, that's my prediction. Yeah. He's only made one blunder so far, and yeah. it was actually a difficult checker play on, the, on that decision. 5-4. Yep, standard opening game response. 4-2, that's a great one. And I, is that the right deuce, Mochi, coming down? Oh, I, I think so. Okay, good. Good play. 5-6, that's a huge shot. Couple three, that's also a huge shot. So that's one, that's the anger. Safeguard against the gammons and the blitz. And now the question is, do you make the five or the three? You go for structure over flexibility or flexibility over structure. Good play from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give up the eight point while making a new point and gets to unstack the six. All right, this six one is a little bit interesting. You can make a bar or you can play safe and uh, split the back man. 
Oh, it's actually close. I, w I have a strong preference for the bar point here, mm. but as you can see, it's actually uh, a very close play. And the safe play is actually slightly better. I think I would have made the same mistake as Hans here. 6-3. Okay, so I guess you just run. You're still up 10 pips. Yeah. So it's actually probably a pretty good roll. Now that you couldn't hit. Oh, what about this one? Oh, he's tempted to make the five point here for okay. good reason. It, uh, I think it's a little bit too much, leaving three on deuce. Could be a slight overplay, and you don't get to move the back checkers. You want to get those back checkers moving. Mm -hmm. But this is a tricky, tricky <laughs> roll, actually. I think I would make this play just because there's not really any splitting play yeah, that yeah, doesn't... Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I don't, I don't know. Oh, it, yeah, it, it's, it's a good a play. It's a light play. Good play, Hans. And 3-1 yeah. is duplicated. He, yeah. he wouldn't hit. And now he's not going to hit, of course. Mm -hmm. Still a good roll from Hideaki. That's actually a strong argument that the, the threes mm -hmm. were duplicated mm -hmm. uh, for the 3-1. Three three I'm sorry, 3-1. Three oh, yeah, 3-4 as well. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, very good play by uh, Hans Levy. I, I wouldn't find it. Five two, yeah. Couldn't do anything. Standard play, no decision there. Six, Six five. five. Ooh, are we gonna see the double falcon here, Mochi? <laughs> where you come up with the two back checkers? Yeah. Is it called double falcon? Apparently, I learned that yesterday. <laughs> so that's the double falcon play. It is not the right idea here, but it's rather close for such a dra dramatic checker play. He is taking a look at it. I mean, I like the fact that he's taking a look at it, <laughs> and I think he might play this move. He did make a double Falcon pay play, Hideaki. Yeah, uh, Hideaki in my yeah. match, uh, when I played against him on day one, he made a double Falcon it, play. It's double Falcon from Michi? No, I don't think it was Michi who oh, came okay. up with it. But it's probably expired, uh, inspired <laughs> by Michi. Yeah, double Tiger. From the, yeah. He does make the he double Falcon. It. I like the play. I mean, it, it makes sense to me, but of course, it's here as we see. It's a, it's a mistake, but uh, it's definitely an expert, expert move. Oh, look at this three six. Uh, we have seen uh, ah. extreme game on here. Ooh. You got a split. There's a blunder potential here. Oh, mm -hmm. is he gonna mm -hmm. fall in the trap? He is. Mm -hmm. There's a blunder. This is great news from Hideaki. Good sequence. That's a good sequence from Hideaki. Yeah, he fell into the trap there, uh, Hans Liebe. You should have split with the sixes to getting out of that uh, now 24 he's point. Split for sure. Yes, easy play. Hideaki, of course, he's not going to queue, but this goes. Wow, that is a trilemma. Does he come <laughs> up? Does he make the seven? Yeah, you can, uh, three choices. Or do you make the blitzing move? Right. The score kind of. Wow, it's close. Look at the analysis. It's so close. Oh, yeah. Three plays are almost identical. So the blunder potential is taken out of the equation. <laughs> but I think we're going to see Hideaki to spend some time here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so according to some of the viewers, uh, it is Michi who came up with the double falcon play. Confirmed by Hans Marius Eichset. <laughs> so that's cool. So now he's counting the numbers. Any A's, 7, 8, 9, and 10, it's a lot. It's probably like 20, 22 or something. All the moves look so good. Yeah. It's so difficult to, to, to choose between them. This looks super nice, but on the other hand, it gives him a free roll. Yes. So he's going to make some, uh, some progress. Two, three, uh, two, five, three, five, making a four point. If the score was rever reversed, yeah. we would see the blitz move here, the double uh -huh. hit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But uh, sure. yeah. when you're leading three away, six away, it's not really the right idea. The two other plays makes more sense. The double match point play is making the seven point. And mm -hmm. the gammon goal play is to make the double hit, of course. And the gammon safe play is difficult because it's 
difficult to say whether it's the seven point or coming out, but it seems according to the XG analysis here that coming out is slightly better at Gammon Go, but very, very close. Making the seven point is the best play according to XG++. Okay, the margin just increased a little bit when he ran the XG++ analysis. We can't see the margin now because of his mouse's plug. There it is. Well, it yeah. looks like he's going to make this play. Okay. This is also such a nice play. If you don't get hit, you achieve full freedom. And there's a lot of duplication going on because if he has to spend one or two dice on hitting, he's not going to develop his front mm -hmm. position with mm -hmm. all those mm -hmm. spare checkers. Mm -hmm. Very tough decision over the board. And uh, if Hans hit one of the outfield blocks, then he has uh, lots of return shot from the roof. Yeah, with a better inner board. Yeah. Note uh, Weda doesn't think about the double hit at all. He didn't even think about he it. He seems to have discarded that yeah. play. I think I would have done the same, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, that would, would be the first player that I would discard at mm -hmm. this score. Um, and I would not know which one to choose between the two others. I, it's completely understandable that he's yeah, spending time yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Little does he know that the blunder potential is not yeah, present. Yes. But it's actually unlucky for him that this, if he had known that the equity difference is such a small thing, you know, he would just play. But of course, yeah. over the board, I would spend some time. He on does it. make the seven yeah. point, which is the best play. So well played. And three uh, five is ooh. a great response. <coughs> it is. It's duplicated still, but what is oh two <gasps> six is one of the worst numbers. Oh, he don't. I think he should take some time here actually because he has two plays. Oh yeah. There's a lot true. of tempo here because look at all That's the the true. building numbers from uh, wow <laughs> from Hans Liebe. Another difficult play. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, and again, it's it's completely tie, I mean, close. It's so close. Practically tie. The tempo gain yeah. here from the hit is huge because Hans stands to develop his position, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to destroy your your structure, your prime value. Yeah, I like this play. Mm -hmm. I think it takes some courage to play this play, even though it's a micro error. Oh, oh, look it at is this. a double. Wow. It's a double from the bar. Do you think Hans could find this cube? He's thinking about it. But it's definitely there's some uh, swing on the next roll. Any deals? Uh, I mean, roll like 4 5 is completely fine. It's very good, actually. Yeah. Double fours, yeah. double aces. Double twos is an absolute and destroyer. The score, of course. The score, yeah. This is an expert decision. If he finds the cube here. Yeah. He's a 56% favorite, but the volatility is super high. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. And he's down in the match. Mm -hmm. Even if he found, he will not get re cubed anytime soon. He wow, found well the, played, Hans. He won the very nice cube here. That's amazing. Very impressive. Yes, it yeah. is. Hans uh, impressed me by a lot in many decisions over yes. two matches. Wow, I did not know that he's that good, to be honest. Wow. Of yes. course, it's an easy take. Yes. Let's see. This is a big swing. The deuce is there. Is five. Yeah. Two five. He's okay. Rewarded. Very strong roll. Mm -hmm. Not a complete destroyer, but mm -hmm. very strong roll. He needs three or five. He did roll a three, that's okay. fine. He's getting primed, but at least he's going to remake the eight point, right? Mm -hmm. Does he have I any other play? I, I think uh, making eight is too strong to give up. He wants to enter with three, but... Uh, yeah, you got to make the eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see here what... Double four. That's not a good roll. No. That's actually a terrible roll. Yeah, I wouldn't say terrible, but... Uh, it's not the best roll. I guess you're gonna make a three. Because point. even the sixes, like six one, six two, six three, plays well. I think it's in the bottom of the range in terms of how how good that roll is. If he could re-roll, he would definitely do it. Mm -hmm. It's not horrible, but he's losing timing. It's too many pips to move in a priming battle. And he has to make the, the impure three point here rather than making the four point. Wow. Difficult one. 
Yeah, I, the, and again, the double fours, always super difficult to play, so he should take some time here. I can't see from the analysis what the error is. Oh yeah, it's, I can see from the absolute er equities. So it's a 30 error. Mm -hmm. But making a four point is a big error. Yeah, you, you want to three. You want to block the sixes. Mm -hmm. You mu must keep the uh, yes. six point. I think he knows this, Hans. The value of blocking the sixes here. A three is for one law. Yeah. So this is the first three fours, and then you're considering pre whether playing ten to six or playing five to one. But now he's thinking. Now, where's my next six? The next six, he gonna break one of the points. Yeah. So that he didn't like. Ooh, this is not good. He, he maybe that's he's maybe that's what he's thinking yeah. about his sixes. But you cannot break your structure. Look no, how he's no, priming. No. You cannot break that eight point. It, you have so much prime value from that eight point. You force the sixes to be played on Hideaki's own side of the mm -hmm. board, which is super destructive. Mm -hmm. Maybe he doesn't roll a six. <laughs> you don't need to roll a six, you know. And I think he just set the record for most checker shuffling in one move, <laughs> Hans. That's right. No, Hans, this is the wrong idea. Yeah. Hans might uh, mess up with this. There's severe blunder potential here. He, I this think he's going to make it. Oh, not this one. This is the worst. Oh, oh wow, no. that's really bad, wow. right? Oh, it's not even analyzed yet. Let's see how. I think it's like 200, more than 200. This is really, really ugly. Yeah, Hans is playing at a 10 now. Wow. That w ah, It's a weird mistake because it's a priming battle. You need structure and mm. you want to block the sixes. That was a really, really bad one. If Hideaki can can uh, win this match, it looks like as if he, he's going to win the PR rather easily now. Mm. Let's see when the transcriber goes back and uh, and give us the the analysis of that blunder, how big it actually was. Okay, 4-2. So now he has a slot or not decision. Yeah, he's looking at it. That's the the fancy play, but it might be right here because you're playing a, a prime versus prime where your opponent has a single checker. But you can get gammon more often. Okay, so it, it was a mistake, it was almost a blunder. Yeah, you do win more, of course, but... Uh, it was a fancy play yeah. that didn't pay off, or but at least from PR's point of view. Yeah. If he can close it here, he needs a six. Oh, it was yeah, almost a he six. He did, but then he has to break up the, uh, the yeah. six prime for one second. This is not good for Hideaki because he's in gammon danger now. You need to hit, and then Hans needs to fan, and then Hideaki needs to roll a six. That's basically the sequence here. Okay. Ace five. I guess it's kind of probably better than fanning, but I'm not really sure. Four two. Blind versus blind. Yes. Any five is oh, bad. That's bad. Any five is bad. Yes. Hideaki has some. Gin numbers here, 6141. Yeah. 4-6, six. that's interesting. That's the 4, and then I guess you got to hit with the 6, right, Mochi? Hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, it's Maybe close. Maybe he just go. It's super close. Yeah, he just let him roll. Super close, so even in double match point, it's super close. He might spend some time here. But once again, it's a toss-up. But he doesn't know that over the board. Obviously. Um, yeah, we still didn't get to see how big that blunder actually was. I think it was in the 200 range, that double four from Hans Liebig. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's... Okay, he, so he finds the best play according to XG++, but it was super close. Now Hideaki, oh, it's not a, it's, I think it's a, it's a double take actually, if you were to shift the recube here, wasn't it? Because of the match score. But now of course it's too good. Oh, no, no, he did miss a big recube. He did miss yeah, a big recube. Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, inter that's what you had to have to think three. about. I made exactly the same mistake against Thomas Tenland on day one here in the UBC. I forgot to think about this. I was leading the same three away, six away, holding a two cube. You do have some recubes, you know, and, and your yeah, your opponent has an eleven percent take point, so mm -hmm. there is a doubling window, even though it's very narrow. 
Okay, but this is looking really good from Hideaki. Um, I think Hideaki is way ahead now in both average PR. Hideaki is probably the favorite now because he's leading in the average PR department. Yeah. There's a comment here from a user called 18CXKK that estimates in terms of equity loss, Hans Liebe is now approximately 0.45 mm -hmm. behind. So this is almost, oh, there's the cube. Okay. But I guess now it's a pass, right? 11% yeah, yeah. take point. Yeah, we're not having that investment. Yeah. But still a, a good decision from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. Played on too good, got mm -hmm. some decision, free mm -hmm. decisions, mm -hmm. and then cashed the game at the, exactly the right time. This one, I, I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna take this I mean, one. He's just yeah, remembering the take point at the six one. Yeah, it's eleven percent, mm -hmm. and uh, in, the, in the actual position, he has a little bit less than four percent. It's yeah. basically impossible to win this position. Perhaps he's getting a little bit tired now, Hans, because I mean, I, I understand that you have to remember the take point and look a little bit, but now it's like, is he actually thinking about taking this cube? So far away from your take point. No, I don't think he's gonna take it. Yeah, he's gonna pass. Good decision, obviously. And Hideaki is looking good. He's looking really good. He's way ahead in the PR race. It's almost a lock. We shouldn't say never because these yeah. things happen all yeah. the time. But, well, but in the global game, it's much more easier. That's now it's no cube. Decisions. No cube. So a big edge for Hideaki. If he can win this match, he's going to be the first finalist of the UBC Contender Tournament 2020. Six one is, I think. Jonas Model says uh, six one. It's not eleven percent, Mark. I believe it is, Jonas. Maybe 10.5. <laughs> yeah, 10.8 maybe. No, I think it's 11.1 or something like this. Um, 6.3. Okay. So we saw the double, uh, the slotting play with 4.1 from uh, Hans Liebe. So that's pretty cool. He is at that s even points away, six points away. So he does have gain from winning a gammon. So the slotting with the uh, 4-1 in the opening. Is that a move you, you like to make as well, Mochi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five two up clear play. Good start for Hans. Very good start and very easy to play the checkers from here. Yeah. Probably going to be easy decisions. Eight, six two three five. Wow. Oh, that uh, is good. Okay, so he's rather fast to look at this one, the mm -hmm. priming move. It is the right play. Okay. But understandably, he's spending some time here because it's not an obvious decision. The fact that he has gained from winning a gammon kind of wants him to make an offensive play here. Oh, one, two. Ha-ha. a great number. Uh, dilemma. Mm, well, not really. I not think really. he just hit and step up, no? Oh, wow, it's a dilemma, okay. It is dilemma. I, I would make the stepping up and hitting yeah, as well. Yeah. But wow, yeah. I guess it's because Han still has two checkers on the 24 points, so the prime value from making the seven is very big, and you're still exposed to the blitz here. Three blots, lots of loose hitting numbers. Five, six is actually a bad, bad roll. And now, Hideaki, that's and now he a favorite. very good roll from Hideaki. <laughs> Gets freedom with the back checkers. 5-3, wasn't one of the lucky fly shots. I think now he's splitting everything. Yeah, you don't care he about the gamma loss. Yeah. Yeah, you want to, yeah, good play. Very good play. Maximizing the contact value. So what will Hideaki do here? He really wants to consolidate, but what a horrible number. Is he going to make the, the, the strong tiger move here? No, I don't think so. <laughs> that would be crazy. Leaving seven blots. <laughs> Perhaps if the score was the other way around, he might consider it. Yeah. Yeah, so the only thing he's thinking about here is how do I minimize my exposure? Yeah. How do I play safe? But... Uh, 
he has five blocks, and yeah, this is the right play. It leaves one, six, two, six, four, six, five, six, eight numbers plus uh, maybe double four, nine, yeah. nine double two, ten numbers. Too many shots this one, so I think he's gonna find it mm -hmm. simply just by mm -hmm. looks. It's the one, the only move that leaves less than a direct shot. Five two, he dodges. Very lucky. Uh, I wonder what he's thinking about here. Is there no? Could that ever be the right idea to oh, enter well, on the twenty? Hideaki did the same thing in the uh, last match. Right? I think that was more justified. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's not the same, yeah, right? Because no, at that point Hideaki didn't have a. Uh, no, a point. no, no, no. This no, is, no, this is really right bad. Idea. Especially you, you activate the, the daily builder on the three point, you leave all those shots for the blots to come home. Yeah. This is such a strong anchor in this position on the twenty point with all the blots. When and you still have the goalkeeper. Yeah. yeah. When Hideaki did it in the last match, uh, there's no point in it. It's like a zero point board. But here he has uh, uh, the two point board, so um, it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's gonna do it anyway. He's just uh, looking along. And he will, will set through the normal play, I think. Let's hope that he can find it. It's, uh, it's also strange because it's a little bit subjective, because in my brain, when I see this position, it's such an obvious play to make the 20 point. I, I see a lot of ugliness by, from the other play. But it's, I mean, we are all different. And sometimes I see something that other players seem to be an ob obvious play for them. So yeah. th there's something here confusing Hans about this position. He knows that he wants to maximize contact, but coming in on the 23 point is just not a good way to do it. Leaving so many no good numbers for Hideaki if he does that. He's spending a good amount of time on this move. It is a critical move actually in, in this game. Oh, he's gonna make it. Yeah, I think, oof, mm -hmm. big blunder. Mm -hmm. I think it seals the deal for the PR, for the PR battle. Yeah. So Hans simply win this, uh, need to win this match. Then uh, that's it. Hans is not gonna win a PR battle. Yeah. Um, this match on average, I think. Yes. So, Five four. So he needs to win. Maybe he's gonna make another blunder here, because this is actually a di more more difficult decision, I think. No, no, whether it's to fine actually. Whether They're to make out. Yeah, exactly. It's also fine to make. Oh, it's very close. Mm -hmm. So this is a real decision. Here is definitely not obvious whether you want to mm -hmm. be splitted and maximize contact or you want to make the anger. Both plays are very valid. Yeah, Hideaki is a big favorite now in the semifinal. Yeah. Basically, Hans has to win this game, which he does around a third of the time. <laughs> yeah, and then probably like 95% favorite in this some, match. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Hans has to get lucky now. Okay, he comes out. I like the play. I mean, I think it's a creative play. It's a yeah, borderline decision. Very mature play. It shows that he knows what's going on, uh, at least from a match theory point of view. 5-1, but he does have, is this is some hard decisions. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he kept rolling. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like this um, committing this point game. Yeah, nice. No, wait, there's another, there's a better play coming out to the 18, oh, anchoring really? on the ace and coming out to the distraction slot on the 18 point. So this doesn't happen. Okay. But difficult decision. Yeah. That was the difficult decision. Oh, was that wrong? I'm very surprised that Hideaki got an error from making the... <laughs> Five point. So you should just make the four point. Yeah. Wow! Obviously. What an interesting play. <laughs> what a surprising play. Yeah. Maybe he has a better distribution. It oh no no no! You don't want to make a four point. I don't think you want to play what? this point game. No. Oh, you do actually a four point. Okay. I think you, maybe I it's something to do with the three point and the spare checker that you, you give him less contact value if you make oh, the four. I see. Okay. But I, I just go with the this point game. He's way down in the race. But maybe his, some of his six will be bad, like instant 6-5, for example. Oh, you're talking about this move? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is another difficult decision for Hans. Mm -hmm. Really, really difficult. End game contact can be super complicated. Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Good play. Good play. It's, it's the contact with the, the, the point on the ten point, uh, with the ten point that makes this the right play. I'm curious to see uh, Hideaki's 5-4 after the match mm -hmm. because that was such an interesting play that the obvious move by making the 5-point in his face wasn't the right play. Like, how often does that happen? Okay, so he's in a good shape here, Hideaki. That's a great shot. Yeah. That's clearing the 10 point. He just needs to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, he does see it. Very good shot. Very good shot. Four two. Makes okay. Nice point. You could also go for the the clearing, the clearing clearing play by playing eight to six. But you like the the, the ace point. Mm -hmm. It gives him more options. So only bad number here is six five and six two. Yeah. Another difficult decision for Hans. Here he should stay back. Yeah. Maximize contact. Oh, yeah. I think he's going to find this play because he had a propensity to maximize contact mm -hmm. earlier on, mm -hmm. and this one is more clear. Good play from Hans. Very good play. 4 3, great shot from Hideaki. Now he's a huge favorite. Hans wants to enter now, so he's not on the bar while Hideaki clears the 8 point. Yeah, that's a bad fan. Only double 4. How is Hideaki, this is he going to leave the double 4 shot? Okay. Could be the last decision of the yeah. semi-final, actually. I think he do, actually. He does. Yeah. According to uh, good uh, play from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. You give that one in 36 shot. It was actually a clear play. It was a clear play. Because what you don't want to, uh, want mm -hmm. to see is mm -hmm. you don't clear it, and now he gets a four, and all of a sudden you have the problem of clearing the eight point. So you take a small risk now to get a long-term reward. Okay, looking good for Hideaki. What is he in this position, like a 95%, something like this? 94, maybe, a little bit less than 95% favored. So Hans is in. Hans needs to get really lucky now. Yeah. It's the 6-2, 3-1. Oh, oh, is that? No, th not necessary. I don't think so either. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh -huh. I think this looks so much better, That's but let's see. It's probably not the a big analysis. Deal, but, uh, From a bear off point of view, it's it is yeah. a clear play, mm -hmm. but I mean mm -hmm. it's obviously not a blunder to clear, but you don't want to take. You, yeah, it's more safe to not play uh, clear the six point actually because you're leaving more, more shots mm -hmm. next time. No big deal. He has the lo uh, the time on the clock to to spend here. So of course he can. Okay, so Hideaki is actually looking away while scratching his cheek. Okay, now he's returning his attention to the board. Okay, yeah, he did make the best play. Good play, Hideaki. Aha, uh -huh. he needs to get lucky. Um, okay, that's actually not a good shot. Do you? Yeah, I guess you just. In terms of contact, you actually want to stay on the anger, I think. But this is a little bit ugly. I don't know. Mm, it doesn't really doesn't matter. Really matter. So. Yeah. Okay, so Hans is down to his last. His last shot here. 4-1, 5-1, 6-1, otherwise... 6-1, oh, we get it! Oh, 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 it's wait, not over wait, yet. Wait, 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 wait. It's not over not yet. Over. Hans needs to roll an ace. Oh, no. no. Game over. Game, Game over. over. Yeah. yeah. And this is going to be a comfortable win for Hideaki in the PR. We are going to analyze it on the full uh, analysis settings, of course. But I think it needs a, yeah, takes a miracle. I, I think uh, Hideaki wins maybe... 0.5 PR or something average. Yeah, or even more. It could be more. I think the total equity difference is like more than half a point in equity mm -hmm. in Hideaki's favor. So yeah, the, the match is over. We found the first finalist. Congratulations to Hideaki Ueda. Congratulations for, to Japan for mm -hmm. 
their countrymen representing and doing such a great job. Uh, what do you think about Hideaki's performance in this uh, yeah, match? Hideaki came back to his game and um, Hans made some unbelievable <laughs> blunder. Um, the game uh, never be safe. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> it's interesting because yeah. we saw this uh, the, after the first match, Hans was a big favorite. Yeah. He played amazingly. Yeah. Yeah. We were so impressed. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, in, in game, in match number two, he had some decisions where he was, perhaps he, he, we exposed some leaks in his game, mm -hmm. where he was, usually he could have a little bit of luck and find the best decision, but this time he was unlucky and mm -hmm. he just made the, the big blunders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've seen it now in the Mochi Challenge, we've seen it in the UBC. You cannot take it for granted just because you're coming no. into the last game no. as a big favorite. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Hans' performance in this in this semi-final oh, matchup? Oh, I mean, he impressed impressed me a lot uh, by you know making a right play in the difficult decisions, and uh, he was he is actually a very good player, uh, but unlucky for him, uh, he um, he got uh, that position and um, committed the 500 blunder. Yeah, but in general, he is a very good player. Yes, I, I have the same impression. Mm -hmm. uh, there is probably a gap uh, from a player of Hans to Hideaki uh, in terms of consistency mm -hmm. and overall, like not having any leaks in your game. But uh, I was impressed with uh, Hans as well, mm -hmm. in, especially in some of the, the more tricky decisions. He seemed to have very good instincts. Yeah. And then he had a couple of positions he just completely messed it up and, and made the big blunders. Yeah. The, so we have the first finalist. Yeah. Yagi Ueda from Japan, mm -hmm. what, a, what a performance and what an accomplishment. Um, I hope we can get some, one of the players down for an interview and look at some of the moves here. And then what's going to happen is that we are uh, going to shut down the stream from the UBC. There will be a new stream on the Gibraltar Backgammon uh, ch uh, YouTube channel for some hours. And then we're going to come back to Backgammon Galaxy's YouTube channel at 6 o'clock for the second semi-final. Mm -hmm between uh, Grandmaster Michi and uh, Grandmaster Thomas Christensen? Yeah, that would be uh, much of the day. I mean, uh, the PR, expected PR would be really low. It's, yeah. it's the two strongest PR players yeah, so far in the tournament. What would be the combined PR? <laughs> yeah, the, the combined co PR would be zero six or something. The <laughs> combined PR average so far uh -huh. is almost below a four and a half. It's a, definitely below a five. So I think we should expect a combined below, yeah. combined combined PR below a five. Yeah, yeah. In that matchup, wow. Christensen has been playing 2.4 uh -huh. PR average so far, and Michi is at 2.7, I think. So, it's that's it's going to be an incredible matchup. Um, I'm also waiting for the match file here, and we could we could review some of the blunders if we get it sent up from the. Yeah, but the let's bring the players down. I think the, we yeah. are working on it, I think. So just while while uh, we are waiting... We can wow, that was amazing. So first he must get to the point that he has a chance to commit 500 blunders. That is already unlucky. Then he did it. Yeah, so this was the big... If the producer could... Uh, Bring up the screen, the monitor of the XG here. Mm. I'm just waiting for the guys. Yeah, okay, so it's on the way. There it is. This was the first out of two. No, I would say this was definitely the big blunder yeah. of this semifinal. It's actually too good to double. Uh, we either made the, the brilliant decision of shipping over the cube. Yeah. Who think it's too good, you know? I did not think it's too good. Yes. So what do you guys in the in the view what do you what do the viewers think about this position? Let's see some comments here. And uh, yeah, we have Alex Wilson saying that the, the cube decisions uh, is twice as important in this format. Yeah, you could say that because he was definitely penalized penalized in two ways yeah. in this position. He went down four zero and he took a, a almost a 500. Blunder. This is really, really amazing. I think about it. First of all, he has to roll 5-1 to break up the point, yeah? Do uh, you remember that he oh, rolled? Oh, yeah, the, yeah. the sequence yeah. here, which Usually was Usually he doesn't roll 5-1. He rolls something yeah. normal, like 13-6 yeah. or something. Then yeah. we thought this is like a simple folding game. 
uh, normally nobody make a mistake, yes. right? We, yeah. we kept saying that the whole game is, is good for is Hans. Game, right? yes. <laughs> then 5 1, this is probably like uh, one of maybe six, seven numbers that leaves the blood. Yes. And uh, he did it. Then the weather must return. Then he has to fund. Wow. It's, yeah, so actually Weda was quite lucky with getting the sequence yeah. to begin with. Yeah. Okay, so we have the winner in the studio uh, getting ready. I think he's getting mic'd up now. So uh, as soon as he has his mic, uh, we can bring in uh, Hideaki for a in post-match interview here and uh, ask what he thinks about some of these positions and how he feels about being in the final of the UBC. Okay, so let's make room. Uh, this one will be interesting to show. And if you have any questions for Hideaki, write it in the chat now, and uh, we'll we'll bring them up. Bring them up. Okay. So I think they're testing the that everything is good. We have a Facebook live stream as well. And if you haven't liked Backgammon Galaxy's Facebook page, you should definitely go in and follow the Facebook page. That's where we post all of the leaderboards, the, the results from the tournaments, all the PRs, all of the social media content like we're doing right now. So if you haven't already liked Backgammon Galaxy's Facebook page, make sure to do so. Also, we have a, we have a strategy group called Backgammon Strategy. Hideaki, Hi. welcome to the studio. <laughs> so let's. Oops. Oh, oh, no no worries. Worries. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just. Uh, of course. I'm a little confused about <laughs> the results. <sighs> you are the winner. I think we can definitely say that we are going to analyze the match on a deeper setting. Mm -hmm. So, Hideaki, congratulations for being the first finalist in the UPC 2020. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Oh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you very mu Thank you very much. How do you feel? Um, I'm just tired and uh, I, I don't I can't find what has happened and uh, I you know I played pretty bad in my first match and uh, especially in a cube and then I'm pretty disappointed that uh, I'm really I feel really regretful not to read your book before the match. <laughs> <laughs> So, but anyway, so the Michi told me uh, the between the match and uh, that um, he he cheered he cheer, he cheered me uh, because uh, he wanted me to win, and uh, so uh, that would make me uh, concentrate on that. Okay, match. so you got a moral boost from Michi. Yes, in the <laughs> I think it helped because mm. you played you came back and you played very well in the second match mm. for a three point zero average. Uh, or sorry, PR. Mm. Um, we had a crucial decision in this match. It was in game one, mm -hmm. in the match number two, mm -hmm. when you sent this cube. Yes. And your opponent took the cube. So this was actually too good to double. Mm. Can you tell us what you were thinking about in this position? Um, <laughs> actually, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure about this uh, cube action, but. Um, Maybe slightly too good, I guess, but uh, mm, practically it's good to double whenever the amount of error is too small. Like so you uh, knew it was a pass? Yes, regardless. exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. Because uh, his board is a four-point board, but uh, only uh, still uh, has some blood and a uh, very awkward shape, uh, very stacked midpoint. Yeah, so you knew it was pass. a pass. Yes. So what was your emotion when you saw that he took this cube? Hmm, uh, yes, a little bit surprised, but uh, uh, that's not, that didn't lead immediate happy, happiness because of uh, nervousness or uh, pressure to okay. beat him. Okay. Mm, but uh, yeah, <laughs> double six was a uh, oh, yes. pretty good for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a question. So yes? before, after the first match, mm -hmm. you were losing in terms of PR yes. and, and results. So on the second match, you have to win both PR right. and outcome. Right. And how did you feel? What was uh, your strategy? Or you played just your normal game? Mm, 
it's not like a strategy, but uh, just try to play to uh, induce some complicated positions mm -hmm. so that uh, uh, let him uh, play bad, bad mm -hmm. worse. Mm -hmm. than okay, that is interesting. Yes. We were discussing this. How much can you actually try to complicate? Mm. <laughs> Maybe not, not many moves, just one or two, I guess, but mm, maybe still work, worked. We, we are also surprised that yes. in the first game, yes. I mean, first match, mm -hmm. uh, you committed some uh, big blunders, uh, such as doubling very early, um, or what was that? Anything else? Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Uh, the big pass. Oh I yeah, I took uh, you took the cube mm. when you were reading 4-0, which mm -hmm. was a big pass, and we thought it's like simple, basic position. Mm. And oh, uh, yes. player like you shouldn't uh, commit that mistake. We have the position here, if the producer can Did you show us. Any this is the position? Yes. Yeah, this yeah. is the position that Weda took the uh, cube, which is a big pass, mm -hmm. uh, because he's reading 4-0. Um, uh, <laughs> I just in my head that uh, your words, the in your quiz, that uh, uh, when you have having a golden point anchor and uh, 26 fifth differences, that words came up my, okay. oh, in my yes. mind. Oh, so, yeah. mm. but he has a bar point. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, mm, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So this was a little bit surprising. Mm -hmm. Um, um, yes, and uh, to be honest, I have not so much reference positions in the simple holding game. So, oh. um, yeah, so after the match, I can find, I, I could find that uh, I should learn more about the cube. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so we have a couple of uh, questions here from mm -hmm. the, the audience. Yes. Uh, Dita asks, how did you prepare for this tournament? <laughs> mm, it's a good, good question, but uh, mm, I didn't do any special things, just just as usual, just uh, uh, reviewing the positions, I made a blunders, and uh, uh, playing repeatedly, and uh, to uh, keep my sense in the best mode. Um, mm, <laughs> nothing special for me. Uh, okay. Yeah. Are you surprised that now you're in the final, or yes, did you have any? Pretty surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, the Moti wrote a comment on Facebook that uh, I'm a huge unlucky in no, day, day no. two. Mm. That uh, I I outplayed zero out of five. But uh, to be honest, <laughs> I felt I um, some some kind of lucky. I mean, some kind of lucky. Because of, uh, in terms of PR, uh, not the score, mm -hmm. but uh, mm. yeah, day two Hideaki uh, maintained his role as a PR, but he didn't actually outplay his opponent by a single match. So yes. that is an incredible. I, I thought statistic. it was some very unlucky. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> yes there are ma many complicated factors are there, I guess, because um, mm, pretty. Uh, small decision, decision numbers in day two. Mm -hmm. So the day one's uh, great PR mm -hmm. uh, is m much more important than day two. Ah, okay. Mm, that's one factor. Yeah. Mm. And we also had a very special match on day one, Hideaki, where you beat me in the PR point <laughs> with very little. I yes, think it was yes, 2.1 yes. versus mm -hmm. 2.2. Mm. But uh, I, you have been the most consistent player in the tournament so far. Mm -hmm. uh, all of your PR seems to be around 2.5 and 2.9 mm. or something like this, yes. all the way through. So this is very impressively. I think you've done an amazing job. Great performance and congr congratulations by being the, in the final. Thank you very much. So later we're going to see who's going to be uh, your opponent yes. at 6 o'clock. So remember to tune in. Uh, we have the live stream up on YouTube already, so you can make uh, uh, an alert. And uh, oh, we have the official result from the PR in the, in the f over the semifinal, and it gives a 3.57 mm -hmm. for you, Hideaki, and a 4.68 for Hans Liebi. Yeah. Hans yeah. actually played 1.7 in the first match, so yeah. that's incredible. Yes. Okay, um, so I think we're gonna cut now to something else. Are we gonna cut the stream, maybe? Yeah, we're gonna cut the stream now, and we're gonna be back at 6 o'clock on Backgammon Galaxy's YouTube channel, and now on 
Gibraltar Backgammon's YouTube channel. We're going to continue from the championship. So if you're not already subscribing to that channel, definitely do so, and the stream will go on. Okay. Thank you, Mochi. Thank, Thank you, you, Hideaki. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 BackgammonGalaxy.com presents Beginner's Mistakes in Backgammon, an exclusive tutorial. Lesson number three, don't play too safe, develop. Beginners will often play too safe and not prioritize developing their position. Developing your position means to improve your overall structure of points. To achieve this, you must take some small risks along the way. The opening game is a great example. The beginner would move 13 to 6, but this is too safe. You want to take some risks to force development, especially while your opponent also has an underdeveloped front position. A much better move is 13 to 9, and 13 to 10. It doesn't leave your opponent any direct hits, and it gives you an excellent distribution of builders to form a prime quickly on your next roll. If you don't develop your position quickly, you might end up in a game with a serious positional disadvantage. An underdeveloped position will make it difficult to trap your opponent's checkers, and it also makes it more difficult to run home for safety when you're ahead in the race. Backgammon is a balanced game between offense and defense. The main feature to look for when deciding whether to make a safe or an aggressive play is the strength of each player's home board. If your opponent is too strong, you should play it safe, since getting hit could be fatal. If your opponent is underdeveloped, you can take more risks and play flexible. In this example, your opponent's front position is simply too strong, and we must play it safe with 13 to 6, even though it's very inflexible with 6 checkers on the same point. Since the race is still quite even, your main game plan is to get your backmost checker to safety and try to win the race. BackgammonGalaxy.com Play Among the Stars Available on browser, tablet, and smartphone Subscribe to see more Backgammon videos Tell us which Backgammon videos you want to see